Hi. Hello. And, and welcome, welcome to the Partner, Partner Panel. Panel. So, wait, it's not, have you read the uh, update? The last one that came out? That okay. Yeah. Have yeah, you gotten a chance to play it? Yeah. yeah okay, all right, interesting. So, do you guys think this is a good update or not? Because I've heard multiple different opinions from different partners, actually, and you know, community yeah. members. I've heard it too. And yeah. I've heard individuals be like, this is the worst update in fault history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's straight up. That's publicly. No, publicly. Yeah, and then I've also heard individuals say, I like it. So what do y'all think? Let's start off with Cooch. Well, you know my answer. I like it. I you know. <laughs> it's just what I don't know. I love it. I I the um I haven't had a chance to mess with uh the new smites at all. Mm -hmm. uh, so I want to get started, but I don't play much jungle, so it's hard for me to do that. The biggest thing I noticed with it was the lesser helix. Um, yeah. I'm liking okay. the add to the lesser helix. Again, I agree with you. I watched. I went. You know, I wasn't able to be here for the last uh, panel, but uh, I agree with you that uh, I didn't want it to be the little Harambe. But um, I like what it does. I think what it does is too much. It's definitely too strong. Yeah. Uh, like you mm -hmm. literally melt a tower. Especially if you if you have three of you there, the towers melted. Let alone all yep. five of you there. Uh, you know, yeah. like it's crazy. Forty five yeah. percent isn't melted, but I agree. <laughs> well, I, it it does some damage. Dude, well, here's the, the thing: forty five percent in three hits. Point, no, but but forty five percent in three hits is melted. Yeah. Because three yeah. normal hits should never take forty five percent unless you're fucking loaded. Right. You feel me? So well, in a way, it can be. Most of the time, too, you're going to be like pushing a wave into tower, generally like sieging it after you've like killed somebody. So you're you'll get a couple extra more than likely. Yeah, more than likely, you're just going to melt it and take that tower if you have a prime helix buff. So, yep. I, I also want to say, um, I think like a large another large factor about this is the is how like that's how we react to the enemy team getting prime helix, right? Because you got people that like less like, or oh, prime. Oh, sorry, less sure. helix. No, less 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 helix. Less. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because like, if they all group mid, right, and push down mid, because mid's the most influential lane, so that's where you're kind of like default to use it. If they just group mm. and push down that lane, d don't like group and defend. <laughs> just let yeah. tier one go. Right. Push. Take take the other two tier ones. You can 100 percent do it before they take your tier two. I promise. Right. Right. Bro, I'll be real with you. I I've been in scenarios where I was in a four stack, and we coordinated, yeah. and I've been in scenarios where it was just you know like duoing and it's like all right you know what we got prime helix what the hell are we gonna do right or they got prime helix what do we do low key every time the enemy team gets prime helix i shove the shit out of my wave yeah like but you feel me you know, you know, like you know, i just know at least hard, my sure um, yeah lesser helix. lesser helix lesser yeah. lesser well, they really need yeah. to work on that fucking name by the way like that's <laughs> like le lesser helix prime helix i understand it's baby harambe but let's call it something different something at least a little Called bit more baby unique. buff bro baby buff yeah I, i'm i'm actually okay with that so the baby buff right if the enemy team grabs it i don't care where they are i just make sure my lane is shoved right, right. so right. they just so i just prevent them from coming over if i see a four-man rotate i'm gonna do everything in my power to defend low-key because here's the thing even if they're grouping and shoving mid right and if i go and help defend mid my general thought process is as long as they don't take the tower even and as long as they're just wasting those what is it three minutes to use it right the the more yeah. time yeah. wasted the better it is for me because here's the thing like yeah. let's say they're all there we shove the wave out like we know they grab this shove the wave out i can literally go back to my lane clear wave and then come back to mid before the entire team has successfully pushed up two waves of minions or something. So it's yeah. it, it's really like playing it on the fly, but I I don't think it's as influential in pubs. I think it's more influential in coordinated teams. It, than it's over it's it's yeah, hundred percent in like high tier like comp like teammate play, hundred percent. I think it's like it's way better of an objective. But it's also I think like the mentality of it, because like I've been in plenty of games since the update has been live where no one even looks at the helix until prime spawns right 
But like right before prime, like at 18 minutes, they go grab it because they just happen to be in the area. Everybody's yeah, fighting exactly. in mid anyway. It's like, oh, let's grab this. We just took their T1 yeah. anyway. We could use it on solo. I mean, I, last night we did uh, we did get to their core at, at 16 minutes and use it on their core. <laughs> That's just a flex. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, yeah, the core has even less health. If, if I, and if considering I get it's to a your percentage. core at 16 minutes, though, like... Right. Something's going on. <laughs> right. So a lot of a lot of times what I what I'm seeing so far in this patch, what I'm seeing people not do is that like if if you know that their team is going to take wraps or whatever, like they've just killed you or killed, you know, one of your teammates, let's say they just kill your dual lane, right? And you're mid. So your dual lane just gets killed and wraps are up and they're going for wraps. Like, I still see a lot of people try to contest that for some reason, right? Where it, yeah. it doesn't make sense to do that because more than likely you're not going to get that raptor. If you do, maybe you get that raptor, you're probably going to die, die, right? Like, like, yourself, yeah. yep. So it's it's not worth, right? Like uh, I can't remember. Like one one favor is worth like roughly like sixty gold, I think, worth of stats. So you're getting three favor per team. So. <sighs> You know, uh, like 700 gold, worth, yeah, 700 right. Gold. So it's like two kills worth of gold. So, I mean, even if you go and sacrifice yourself and steal that wrap, they've just made 300 gold off of you, you've made about 700 gold. So it's like a 400 gold positive on your side. So, I mean, that's like that's not terrible, but that's also like probably not gonna happen. You're probably, you know, like realistically, yeah, none of the objectives are worth dying for, regardless. Right. So, but I mean, if you know that they're going to go for wraps, what I'm what I'm not seeing people do, right? If you're mid lane in this scenario, your dual lanes just died. They're taking wraps. You and your jungler should just go take Helix. Like you'll you'll take that. I'll be at, real at though. The same time, and and you'll trade yeah. those two objectives, and that way yeah. you're at least coming out with something. You know what I mean? Do you we know, know how yeah. much health Raptors has? Quick little question. I'm pretty sure. Raptors Cause, and Lesser Helix are pretty comparable when they're... Because I noticed Lesser like, Helix has like say... 8k. Like, Lesser Helix you... is pretty tanky, it bro. It, it doesn't it, necessarily just does crazy damage. Much health. Um, I think it does have too much health, but I think that... uh, I, I want to say level 1 Raptor is like 28 or something like that. 24, 28, something like that. I think, if I remember correctly, I feel like Helix... Well, I don't know. I don't know. Because lesser has... lesser helix right now is has more health and armor than like it would take you to actually just take down a T one with your team. Yeah, you. I mean, you can also do that. I mean, obviously, you can you can trade a turret for Raptor, but I think that uh, helix is probably a better play there because not only are you getting to get a buff that potentially allows you to take turrets really easily or Rock like yeah spread the damage throughout turrets of the map or focus one down but then you're also getting gold you're getting 100 gold only local uh, gold. yeah only local but i mean if it's you your offlaner in your jungle i mean that's 300 gold and you're getting two favor each isn't it just so. a killer i think the person who kills prime oh, oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah that's right yeah, yeah. So 220 experience and, and 100 gold to the person who kills it. But that being said, uh, you know, you also get two favor per whoever's there. In the so, area. Yeah. No, it's global. You know, if you have, yeah, if, uh, it's not no, global. I, that's not no, what it's like. The favor's not global, you're right. Okay. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's in the area. So, you know, that's 120 gold essentially in stats for anybody that's there. So you're getting that, like, the, you know, favor's kind of, it's kind of, neat in the sense because it's it's you're getting gold essentially but it's also like it's like instantly you're instantly benefiting from it you don't have to back and buy or anything like that you're instantly getting those stats so that's kind of nice but also like i said you're getting the potential of taking down a turret and turrets turrets are worth a good amount of money in this game so if you can take first turret with that and you're trading raptors for prime helix and you take first turret even though your dual lane died you're probably coming out on top i if i th i think you are coming out on top i like the uh, i like that it has more counterplay like yeah. thoroughly throughout the matches i was going through giving me something else to do because there was that awkward 15 to 20 minutes like you know what 
we just group and push there really isn't anything else to do we'll clear a shrine here and there but it's literally team deathmatch until team deathmatch let's all play a ram group mid until 20 minutes where prime is up right so I, it, I don't know what you're talking about group mid when do it's group duo lane true 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 you're right you're right you're right group duo group duo you're right yeah, while solo that's, wp that's, that's the yeah. other thing that's like good about this objective in my opinion is like before because i play a lot of support with a lot of dual lanes so like all four of us do actually yeah, yeah, there's all, yeah we're all dual yeah, lanes yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah so like i mean you guys know how it feels where it's just like it seems like that that side of the map is just stacked you've got two shrines and you've got wraps you know what i mean and, right. and it has two, felt two a little less lane. busy now right exactly so it gives it gives the option of playing on the other side of the map you know it gives the jungler the option of like okay well my dual lane might be behind but like i can you know maybe my win condition is my I'll grab it you know quang off lane that's like four and oh you know what i mean maybe i just want to play off of him maybe i want to play off that side of the map because i know i can you know get these objectives get the lesser helix twice and then we can start opening up the map which generates a lot of pressure so even if you're dueling yeah. behind you know if you're opening up the map then then your 4 and 0 quang can start rotating earlier and affecting the map and potentially win you the game so this kind of it gives you that option i guess is what i'm saying you don't have to just like group do a lane all the time and just like just bend them over the table you know you can you can do that in in other places so i was gonna say let's talk about those jungle items real quick while we're on the subject of controlling the map and jungle and everything because like here's the thing from outside looking in right you look at these patches i'm like okay so now there's a jungle item that automatically heals me for 10 percent of all the damage that i did but then also if i clear a jungle camp i'm gonna get mana off of it and now i hit the camp even harder as well starting off like these jungle items like i i like the fact that they make you super strong in the jungle but then they make you w almost worthless in lane like you literally only leave the jungle to gank right and then it also has a slow so like when i when i look at all that i'm like you know what low-key like these jungle items are like monstrous like game changing for junglers yeah and and at the same time i'm like i i almost feel like they're too strong but then again as a you know like playing as support and carry i haven't come across a jungler that's just fucking insane right. with these jungle items you know what i mean right I think like, what it's trying to do, and I could be wrong, but I feel like it's trying to keep the junglers from taking the lane minions and allowing your your laners to get their minions. That is really what they're trying to like. Hey, stay in your jungle, mm -hmm. do your do. Come out here and gank, but leave the rest alone because you'll have times to be out there. And it's like I've watched plenty of sock app streams and socks playing solo lane, and like the, he's like, you come out to your lane, and you're like, what are you doing, dude? Like, yeah. like I need my minions. Yeah, leave them alone. <laughs> get out of here <laughs> dude i'll be real i'm kind of sad that they did a hot fix so you can't carry tempest woe the, the blue jungle item and scrystone kind of yeah, sad they, bro is that what that was they did that because yeah. yeah so i was i was building that on supports because it was it uh, was too good bro being able to literally yeah. just take down three quarters of a shrine as a support and be like i'm not gonna take any any lane farm <laughs> I'm yeah. not losing anything here. And yeah, then right. getting like, energy, little, little mana. Little so you also get a slow, a slow and a, a like vulnerability. a yeah, vulnerability, like a which is kind of thing. Yeah. Well, it's literally just making them take 10% extra damage from all sources in that duration when you smite an enemy player. So yeah. I mean, so that's, you, you that's can still like run it, but strong. you can't run scribe with it. So right. it, it, it would be more of an offensive like, hey, I'm not here to get gold. I'm just here to make sure this man gets the kill if you want yeah. to there is yeah. um there is one thing that the jungle items like i feel like they do that a lot of people haven't really adjusted to um especially in my case in duo lane is uh when you because of the extra experience you get you hit level two off red buff right right so whatever whatever buff you do you hit level two and so that means that their level two gank on your lane is faster 
or they're level right. three ganked on your lane is faster, right? Yeah. And people haven't adjusted for that quite yet. So like the other day, I was it was literally like a minute past minions crash, and Clara was in my lane and killed my support. Yeah. And I'm, I'm in my tower like. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I had that happen with the Kalari red buff gank where she just took red and then came straight to lane and and uh, yeah. killed me and it was like unfortunately a little right? bit before a little bit before two minutes because before it was like a little after two minutes that they would they would get a they would take red camp and then they would take one white camp and then they would hit Maybe level either. two and yeah. then they would come gank right they would do that level two gank but now right now. Our, arm is right that that's because you, you get 60 experience for clearing a camp right so like which also stops people from like scuffing other camps which i kind of like like because before people would like sometimes go into the enemy jungle invade or leave like one. Leave one yeah take yeah. two camps yeah now if you do that when they take that minion they still get that 60 xp so it's it's and you get the really, mana region off of it for clearing the camp and yeah it's, it's not, not bad. really setting them setting them behind so now if you're gonna invade you just want to take the whole camp and get that 60 xp but yeah it does so full clear on red side was giving you level three if you full cleared it it's still giving you level three now um as a jungler so the level three gank hasn't really been sped up the level two has definitely been sped up because you just take yeah. red buff and you just beeline to you know whatever dual lane off lane whoever you want to get it almost feels like a full 20 seconds has been sped up honestly yeah yeah um, no it, dude it, i'll it, be real that means the, like, the one minute ward is that much more important now like dropping yeah, a ward right strong. before they grab that red buff yeah. yeah no if you're if you're on strong side if you if you place a ward in their jungle now i think that that's pretty good if you place it near the the white camp that's near your lane whatever i'm like right on the stairs or whatever yeah, yeah that way you can see if they're gonna just take red buff and run straight to your lane or if they're gonna take red buff and then clear camp and then head over you know it'll cover yeah. both now, of those scenarios can i ask you guys have you guys seen anybody use the green jungle item uh yeah mm -hmm. i mean i i have personally yes Okay, I was about to say because I've I've, seen, I've either seen blue or red almost every single fucking time. Yeah, it's because people like damage stats, right? Yeah, well, by all means, they just want to get kills. Yeah, I think on like Grux, Chimera, Kalari, you've seen the red one, um, mm -hmm. and then like you think like a Sev, Sev might run green. Yeah, Sev runs green. Uh, yeah maybe steel run blue. maybe steel can run green or yeah he can run blue too um i've, I've seen sevs run blue they clear yeah. the camps faster they do more damage they to do. people a sl and yeah. regardless slow and then a stronger siphon to stack even easier would it be yeah. a, a boris that runs like a red or a green or would he be yeah. blue as well yeah. i he, he i could see him red because he's he physical red. damage anybody that's physical damage runs red Anybody that wants to be tanky runs green, and anybody that's energy damage runs blue. That's about yeah. the general gist. I think, you know, in a way, I feel like the green one is gonna is gonna see an uptick when there's more like dedicated 100% tank items, right? Okay. Where, like you're like I'm building tank the whole time, so like this early armor is actually kind of important. Or maybe yeah. somebody who has like higher higher base damage, but the armor helps them actually clear their camps and not take so much damage because they don't have a lot of health. You know what I mean? Like it just that's all dependent on like future, but you, I don't think you're gonna see a lot of green until something like that happens. Okay. Dude, I'll be real with that, you. There's there's a current lack of armor meta going on. Like everybody wants to pick like a damage item, or, like a utility item first it. and stuff like that. Dude, I've been starting Phantom it. Blade every single game and fucking people up. Yeah, hi, I have true damage now. Shit about armor. Right? Like I'm yeah. like yo, low key, and I got the movement speed on top of that. I'm like I'm sorry as a carry, I just fucked up the entire enemy team. And now after I'm fucking them up, they're like, "Oh, maybe I should start building bail arm now." Like yeah. rip, too late, bro. Now, well, is it worth with these with these smites? Uh, I remember I think it was Ed on one of the episodes was talking about how it's not even worth for you to upgrade past the smite like you like literally only you're you're wasting after so long in the game like you, you spent so much money getting this whole item that's not actually worth it late game yeah, yeah. is it worth it for these or should you i'll let you guys throw your two cents on this one because i know i feel a specific way as far as is it worth upgrading what do you guys think i i think so i mean you're so you can buy the second component now right the 
oh, what's yeah. it called? That, the like the scimitar looking thing. The, the, one star, that's not, the storm smite, yeah. yeah storm and smite. that one will yeah, that one will give you the um the active on the smite where you can smite other people and get like the fifteen percent slow and ten percent like mm -hmm. weekend or whatever, the vulnerability. But no, I think it's worth upgrading these things. As jungle, I think I would upgrade these things first item, like all the time. Yeah. I don't think yeah, there's I, any reason not to I rush these in boots. Like the okay. two items that I rush. These especially boots, like these in boots and these in boots. Yeah. I mean even like here's one one other thing that's like green smite's really good at, in my opinion, is with green smite and green and green boots, you have both armors really early on. Yep, yeah. physical armor and energy. By all yeah, means. I mean, it gives you four hundred health too, so I mean you, you tank up, yeah, but like I think I think early on people were probably like focusing damage, but you can by all means like if you're playing a tank and you know, if you're playing like Grux or Boris or whatever, and you find that, you know, like late game, you're still getting like blown up by a carry or whatever. I mean, by all means, sell your your red smite and pick up a green one. They're they're pretty cheap, right? They're like what two thousand? Twenty two. Yeah, two thousand. Yeah. 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 Something so I like mean, that. you can you can just sell your your red smite and buy a, a green one later on in the game if you need to tank up more. But um, so to, yeah, for to, sure. To break it down real quick. Because I know that Cooch, you don't necessarily jungle too much, right? And a lot right. of people watching might not jungle too much. Essentially, the way it works is the first smite that you can buy gives you the passives, right? That's a, a simple way to break it down. When you look at this full item, the first one you buy gives you the passives. The second upgrade that you can buy, the Storm Deflection, gives you the active of the item. And fully finishing the item gives you the item stats. For example, Tempest Will, it'll give you energy, okay. power, mana, I cooldown reduction. That right that's a sure. simple way to break it down so you could be an individual that's like hey do i want the 65 energy power 250 mana and the 10 percent cooldown as a mage in the jungle if i'm a countess do i want cooldown mana power if i'm a quang do i want cooldown mana power likeliness is it's going to be a yeah and considering you can get all that for just an extra what 1300 right you get you get 65 energy power 250 mana 10 cooldown out of an extra 1300 that is cheap yeah. as fuck that's a huge yeah, no, early game lead yeah it's, oh, it's they... good it's good stats for the money I, but one thing you do you do get the the active where you can smite jungle camps off the first item you just don't get the you don't get the active okay true of, yeah, correction yeah. Heroes, yeah you can't smite so, a hero with the first one but you can't smite a jungle camp correct sorry right. and and that that by itself by the way that like i don't i don't know i was in a team fight i was playing jungle the other day and i i smited the carry in a fight and he got hit by i think a countess R, and i think did a ton of damage to him like does I mean, a lot it's, the reduced healing yeah, is extra, crazy there's extra 10 yeah, percent damage that he's taken from that count like all sources you know what i mean so he got hit with the countess R and a few other things and he just popped like that you know and i was he was gone so i mean it's it's definitely you have to be careful though because obviously like it i i kind of like it i mean it makes it kind of like league in a sense because in league you have two two smites like two you have red and blue smite and you can smite uh champs and it does different different things but um the, did i just say i wish there, it were like that yeah no Personally? it would be cool i i think i think it would be cool to have that but the the trade-off there is that like you know if you if you go for let's say you're going for like a pick or whatever and you only have one charge on your smite and you smite you know you're going for a pick so you can go prime or whatever and you pick the mid laner or the dual lane you know the carry or whatever and you're like okay let's go let's go prime but you've used your smite on on the carry or a uh, you know, target like that then then you have to be really careful because it's like okay well now i don't have smite you know because i've used it on that's a good point it's not an objective you know so now they can come steal it and the one thing that i will say with this patch right this is kind of tying in with smites and also the changes that they've done with the uh walls not being able to stand on prime pit mm -hmm. is that i really hope and i haven't i think i've suggested this but i haven't been too too loud on it but uh I hope that when you have vision in the prime pit, like if you have a ward in there or whatever, or vision in the raptor pit, now that they've made these changes to where you can't just like go up on the wall on certain characters and just sit there and kind of watch, I hope that the, that vision will actually show the health bar of the objective all over the map if you have vision. So you can see 
you know, obviously if nice you have vision change. anyway, yeah, if you have vision anyway, you can see them. They're, okay, they're obviously taking it. You know, you have vision in the pit, they're all there. But you still, right, right now, can't see the health bar. So right now the change, you, you used to be able to kind of like halfway commit, jump up on that wall, watch the health bar, and then try to steal it. Now you can't do that. You have to full commit. So if you jump into that pit and you have no vision, you do it too early, then you're just dead, you know? Right. So. It would be nice if these wards would, you know, now show the the health bars on the objectives. That way you can be like, okay, well, you know, now I can actually, now, you know, I can actually We should contest. See. We shouldn't and, contest. And I, They're right, still at full. Can, we got a second. Right. And it's, it's getting low. And now I can just jump over that wall and fully commit. And I have a better shot at stealing it now. So I hope that they do something like that because yeah. it kind of sucks not being able to see the, the health bars of the objectives currently. The I'm thing, not saying... Go ahead, Arma. The only thing that's going to suck in that case, um, it's not, I don't want to say it's going to be hard, but it's going to be interesting to see how they decide to implement something like that is because like right now, if you have currently have vision in Prime, Pit, right you have all your enemy health bars like all over the place that's what i was gonna say so it's just gonna overlap over the prime health bar a yeah. lot so right. it's gotta it's gotta be it's gonna be weird like where you're gonna see where you want to see it you know what i mean because i don't want to be part of the hud but i want to make sure it's if i'm looking at that area i can see it i don't right. know exactly what the best option is but i agree 100 percent. Right. i mean you can oh, yeah do maybe like a, a bigger health bar that's kind of because i mean it's always gonna it, prime is so tall it's gonna be over prime you know i think it oh, would be you can have a different colored like, health bar too loki is that, yeah is that pun, in, pun intended over prime <laughs> well, no, the, the big thing for me is that yeah prime's prime's taller but it uh, if i'm like in if i'm in like duo or something right if i'm on the right. other side of the map the the pit's low enough that i feel like it's still gonna like cause an interference yeah you know what i mean I mean, um, it's already it's already bad enough as it is when you're Murdoch and you're trying to snipe, you know, across map and you know, like you have a group. Yeah, of the not team being there, able like, to turn off to, health bars. Trying to, trying to decipher who's there and who's not, like where they're at. You know, that's it yeah. gets a little challenging as is with that. Now put a team fighting or prime at the same time. It's just going to be a little bit different to understand which one's what. Yeah, the different color, but how? What if I'm not trying to snipe prime and I know that there's somebody low and I'm trying to take a kill, but I can't. You know, if if Prime's over top, I don't know. Now I can't see that low person. You know, yeah. like there's it's got to be things. You got to have a balance there. No, so yeah, it's, it's just gonna be hard to do. However, they're gonna do it. I would say I would say uh, in in most situations, you're probably gonna be trying to, you know, like the purpose of showing or Prime health bar would would be to have like easier steals you know what i mean like have have that information there that you can see where it's getting low so you can know like where to get in and stuff like that or when to get in um so i i would think like the in most situations you're probably going to be wanting to steal prime anyway um over like killing somebody so i i think personally i'd, I'd rather have like a maybe a, a different looking health bar different color i think is a good idea and maybe have it a little bit larger and have that health bar uh take precedence over like champs or whatever because once so we actually this plays in the front right well yeah. so like yeah have that have that thing you know it could be up higher but like if there's like a champ behind it that's got a health bar or whatever like have that the over prime health or the um the prime helix whatever have that health bar you know over over top there is that way you can see that one instead of theirs i, I would think that that would probably yeah. be a little bit better you could arma i know you said you don't want it in the hood but you could also have that maybe in the top of the screen somewhere have like as a, a pop big health bar yeah as a pop just like the tower vision. health for example right yeah. exactly. like as soon as you're like within raptor or, or right. prime normally like and, right and, there right and it it wouldn't it wouldn't i think the way the best way maybe for them to do that would to be like if you have vision on the pit that health bar doesn't show until it starts taking damage once it starts taking damage then it'll pop up on the top of the screen somewhere and you know and that way you can track it you know what i mean but once like that idea better actually yeah once it once it regens to full it, you know if, if you get them off prime or whatever once it regens to full it just goes away you know i i think my my only issue there is that um then like this, this is probably something small right but my my mind mm -hmm. if, if if i have vision on it and i'm on the other side of the map but i'm not looking at that area i shouldn't be able to see its health right if i'm not committing my own character model looking that direction i shouldn't see its health no so maybe yeah. maybe if i'm turned if i'm like facing it 
you know what i mean like, have it like a highlighting thing like if you're highlighting yeah. in that direction and you have a ward and it, it pops, pops up populates then i'm okay with it but yeah. I, I don't want to be running that would just be more intricate have this health bar that i don't want up there you know what right. i mean that's not really super important to me right now right but what if it was i mean it says if you have vision on it then you're gonna see it on the mini map anyway so having that health bar be there would still be i mean it's the same as you having the ward i mean you seeing them on you know the, on the mini map them fighting it so you having even though you're running down duo lane having a little health bar there i guess i don't i guess i don't have an issue with it you know having that little health bar there for that brief time if my yeah, just, is gonna try just, to smite it it's just more things from to have on my screen that's active that isn't important to me at that moment right like if i'm on top of it 100 percent, that's important to me but if i'm if i'm like on like i said if i'm just randomly pushing side pushing duo like split pushing and my team's over there it's not super important to me to know when if my jungler can smite it or not right unless i'm making calls so if i'm if i'm the one making calls and i can just quit look at it watch it and then you know what i mean like strafe down lane sideways and see the health bar yeah. but if like, let's say i get in a tier two tower right and now all of a sudden i got the the timer prime health bar tower health bar and i'll still whatever's going on on the screen you know what i mean right i want it to be if that's i 100 think that would be that would be fine i just wanted to make sure that it is a like, aimed thing like i have to be actually committing my my visual to that area of the map right and yeah, there's different ways that they could implement it it's just yeah but i agree 100 having something implemented i think is a big issue which by the yeah. way Something that I didn't notice personally until it was pointed out is the fact that the width of the lanes got reduced in order to increase rotation times. Did they? I don't know. If yeah. Right, right under the last jungle item, Reign of Fervor, width of all lanes along the river have been decreased slightly, which what that does is it might add an extra foot or two from the from the jungle entrance right not even not even nothing that was too much noticeable but that extra step that you have to make that is now in the jungle as opposed to in the lane technically increases an extra step on all areas like let's say do it from duo to mid now you have an extra two steps that you have to take which does ever so lightly affect rotation times and stuff like that yeah i didn't actually i didn't even realize that i didn't see that um, that part yeah. was, i read it and i didn't even like register what it was even talking about like but i'm like okay I kept, <laughs> I kept when you when you read it <laughs> when you read it you're like okay and when you play it doesn't it doesn't feel like it impacts anything so because it wasn't like anything you know crazy I mean? it was it was super yeah. subtle like like i was saying like even if you move a jungle entrance over like a foot it might not even register right but if that shit was legit like five feet out people would be like what the fuck is this jungle entrance now where the fuck did this come from yeah. so i'll i'll be real i i think it was a nice change i can definitely almost like tell more now just based off of my ward positioning i don't know if you guys have realized that i put a ward now let's say to cover the edge of those jungle stairs i'll put i'll place it down and then realize that as far as radius goes like this damn this doesn't reach as far up as i thought or now when i'm putting a rad yeah. pulse down i'm like damn if they had a shallow rad pulse if they had a shallow ward this deep ass rad pulse that i picked up now can't pick it up because it's just like a foot or two out of range yeah 100 so just little things like that that you know it just adds more interesting intricacy to it something right. that i like to see out of the map design that gives me more hope for the newer map quite frankly but oh, I mean, <laughs> no, I was, I was, I'll be real. I don't really care too much ever about optimizations. The way that I see it is like, Hey, this is shit that should have been working. Right. Um, I will say thank you, baby Jesus for the fact that a basic attack no longer randomly shoots <laughs> off when you place a ward. Oh my God. Holy all shit. Who, all of us who tested this update, the first thing we did was place a ward. like in base. We were Bro. all like, gee <laughs> yeah like, it was just such a small fun. quality of life thing but like when i'm placing that deep ward for example in the red jungle the last thing i wanted was to be a murdoch around the corner and you just hear from shoot. behind the wall it's like fuck, yeah. fuck, get out get out get out yeah. <laughs> yeah, 100%. so yeah so um, i like that 
There is uh, the the one thing about the map collision situation. Mm -hmm. I wanted to I wanted to bring up was the because this is a hot topic in the community, so I kind of just want to talk about it if we can. Yeah, go for the, it. The the ledges that they fixed. Um, so the blue buff ones got undone. Um, the blue buff ones were were still the collision was fixed. We can walk on them now. That was part of the hot fix last night. But the okay. um, the prime buff little window you still can't stand on. Um, I just wanted. But to you know can leap over. Are. You can leap over 100, percent but you can't yeah. stand up there. Which there's been a lot of back and forth between everyone about it. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to. I, I I don't know. Like in my opinion, I don't think I think standing up there was unhealthy. Like just like especially if some, like someone like Gideon who can just get up there for free and his kid without buying anything. But then you got heroes like. Oh, trust me, bro. Like, we're gonna have a conversation about getting in a second. I don't even know about. Oh no. Um, <laughs> trust me. But there's 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 a lot of heroes in the roster that don't have like a jump or don't have a way to pull them down in their kits, right? Mm -hmm. And it, if you're just sitting up there and the other team is on prime pit, what do you do about that Gideon? Do you just stop yeah, doing I, prime? It it's just a hundred percent unhealthy. I agree. I still like the possibility that somebody with mobility can easily go over. Yeah. Like Sock said, now it's more of a, hey, I have to full send it, right? But I do agree that, for example, if they're doing Prime Pit and I have a ward in there, I should be able to at least get some sort of information to know if I full send it or not. Like right. that, that hole up there right now is pointless because if somebody jumps over through there. Thanks, baby. Yeah, no, you're good. Oh, <laughs> right. <laughs> he just tripped out. But like, for example, <laughs> like if somebody jumps over the wall, you're either dead or you're dead yeah. low key yeah. so yeah, it, could, it, it, it seems almost like pointless map design because there's no real work around it you feel me right yeah it was before it was just half-assing you know i mean like this is what my dad used to say a long time ago don't half-ass anything you know so i i think it's a healthy change because before you could just kind of half-ass it as like a Kalari Gideon or like a Bellica if you build Blank or any of the characters that can get up there and just watch it go just down. Just sit up there with a smite and wait to jump down. Drop a rock on it and be like, oh, I got it. Uh -huh. And then just run off, you know, as the Gideon. And it's like, what are they? They can't chase you. They can't jump over the wall. They have to walk around the pits. Like, okay, you just got Prime for free. And yeah. it's What's like, even worse? The leash, you know, so. Right. What's even worse is when Gideon TPs the whole team up there. Bro, yeah. having a Murdoch up there like, is just ah! disgusting. <laughs> having a Murdoch yep. take a knee while he's way the fuck up there minding his own business. It's just like, I don't <laughs> yeah. even know what the chances are that this man is going to land it. But that's just disgusting. That shit. It's just annoying. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, be, I'll be real. I do kind of wish. How do you guys feel about this? This might be controversial on its own. Instead of just having random ass openings up there. Right. What if you had some sort of still full commit map texture but imagine if there was a ramp that went from your green shrine wrapped upwards to the ledge right but make it some sort of mechanic like or some sort of corner to where you can't see the objective unless you actually dive down does that yeah, you like could do, you could probably like, do something some so, like that kind of kind of like how let, let me give an example like mid probably isn't the best example because you still can stand up there and drop rocks or whatever the hell right but you can't see you can't really see that t1 tower while you're standing up on the top ropes at mid you have to jump down to see the t1 tower you get what i'm saying there yeah so kind of imagine kind of like that like if i jump up there i can now see like a little corner of the prime pit but for me to actually see prime i have to literally just like full commit and drop down to get a visual on right. prime yeah, you could probably do something like, like some that. sort of map design and i know they probably won't change shit because they're working on a new map you know this is an old map yeah. it's just more about optimizing but i that would just be another great example for me of using verticality in a creative way because think, um... that window opening is an opportunity for verticality but now it's almost like a suicide mission if you use it yeah i I mean, I think the the word, the word thing that Sock said 100% would help that. But I also want to just kind of say something as far as design philosophy wise and like how generally we stand on like those those ledges, right? Um, 
the ledges where you can teleport up and stand on like obviously as a whole we would want more of them we we like we enjoy those we would want to put them in the game right but they can't be in places that are important right you know what I mean? yeah you like behind t1 is gain, yeah, a good you one can gain a advantage an inherent advantage over something that's going to in, make or like, break the drastically game. improve your favors to win the game because you have a teleport you know what i mean right. yeah so like it, it, in the new map, expect to see like random ledges in corners that feel like they don't matter, but that gives those those heroes more ability to fight in those areas. Like if I fight you in an area where I know I can get out with a ledge, or I have a or I have a secret gank route that I can get to because of it, that's I feel like that's gonna be more impactful gameplay wise versus someone just sitting up there and, and waiting because that to me that that's where it's unhealthy. You know what I mean? Right. right. I think the biggest issue is is Gideon and being able to do so much damage with dropping that rock i think that's the biggest thing like even if you're kalar and you jumped up there the most you can really do is throw a dagger and her dagger doesn't do as much damage as gideon's rock you know that's right. really the big it's it's so easy that like gideon is is the play there and that's why like it it's unfair to have just that one character you have to have another gideon basic to contest that and uh so it again I, I i agree with changing it and and you know making it have to be a full send um but no it it makes sense to to make it to where if you have vision on it you're able to see the health uh even though you have you know behind the wall right There's... so i agree i agree with uh what you guys are saying too but I, what arma said i think is like is important where having having like ledges that provide like safety for certain characters that can get up there that are like inaccessible in accessible for most right. of the cast around things like prime and raptors is probably like a bad idea in my opinion but i would like to see more verticality like in in the jungle areas you know and like the in those areas or whatever that way like you know certain people can use those Definitely. things to their advantage and i think that's because at the end of the day right we don't you know people are complaining like, oh like the map's just getting flatter and flatter it's like yeah, they don't want it to be like smite you know what i mean they don't want it to be like it's in third person but it's still just a top-down game basically where it's like one level you know right. you've got mm -hmm. stuff that like blocks visions but the, the game is all in like one plane like obviously like sms doesn't want that they want verticality in their map that's the draw to this game you it's, know that's yeah, what kind of finding bridges. feature right it, it like bridges the the gap between like somebody that plays like a fps game or something like that and they're like oh wow like this game is different it's a lot different than any other game i've played but it's 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 a moba still but it's also in this like 3d environment and it's fully 3d and like i can aim up and shoot somebody out of the air or you know or i can be looking down and shooting at people or casting abilities like that stuff's really cool so hopefully like arma said in this new map there'll be more hopefully more uh verticality areas like in the jungle and in the river and that that area but then like around like the the prime pit and stuff i imagine it will still probably stay the same or, or stay how it is now where you might have some of those ledges that you can jump over and like surprise people like all of a sudden there's just somebody like flying in their face which i think is cool yeah. you know i mean that's that's cool in itself it's like you know it's like league in a sense like you can just come over the the back wall anybody that has the ability to jump over walls in league can come over that back wall in prime and just like we're at uh baron baron and yeah just come in and just start wailing on people or stealing stealing baron but um so you still have the element of surprise if you jump over i mean that's kind of nice but uh you know being able to just sit on that wall is just not a not a good idea because right. it's just too that the risk to the reward there is just <laughs> it's not heavily favored towards too one-sided yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no i agree though so, there are ledges in there for for graystone decker you know gideon kalari the people who had the jumping abilities is as be good but i also think we need more verticality for all heroes uh in, in, included in the game a little more stairs a little more ramps you know things you know go a little higher in certain areas you know and they kind of give you a little more you know, you know, I don't know, ganking abilities, whatever it is, just something, you know, maybe hiding spots or something, you know, and, you know, add more to it, you know, you know, take advantage of the that being the point, you know, the pull for this game to pull people in. You know, let's let's use it. Let's let's literally show off the verticality with yeah. the new map. I think there I think something else that's important for that issue, right, is uh, is 
actual blink items, right? QS isn't like a blink really to me because because you have to be out of combat. But like if you have like an actual like blink item, all of a sudden a bunch of characters, if they buy this, they can now get to these ledges that are previously inaccessible or they can use it to get out of something a scenario as long as there's a decent cooldown on it and whatever whatever as long as it's balanced, i'll be right? real a blink um i don't even know what these are called to be honest with you like rad pulse the normal ward etc like a blink one of those that is just free to have and you got it would add more competitiveness more dynamics more movement but the trade-off you now don't have a ward Right. You feel me? The, now you, now could, you have to buy sentries. Now yeah. you have to either buy sentries, buy a support item, and that's the only ward you get. You feel me? Or like, hey, now you have this. Now you don't have a rad pulse. So you're against a Kalari. Which one are you really going to want? Right. Those you can emblems that we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. emblems. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. Emblems. Yeah. Yep. The, you can like a lot of games that come like trinkets or whatever. Like you could, yep. you could do that too. I, like, I know. Like I this is know. the only. This is literally the only. Well, you know, with, within perspective, because we all know there's other remakes and shit, but this is literally the, the only MOBA that I can play right now that does not have a random smite item or that does not have a smite emblem, rune, whatever you want to call it, that I can literally just grab for free. I go play smite, I have, an, I have a blink. I go play league, yep. I have a blink. But it's cost me that if I want that, I have to like lose out on something that could be right, useful right. for my gameplay potential. Yeah. Right. Which is I mean, like the I, way I think, I think that, it should be. Yeah, I think it would be pretty good, in my opinion, to maybe have like, um, I think it'd be cool to have like maybe two slots for trinkets so you could get like a ward and then you could pick either like a blink or ignite or ghost or like Ain't cleanse. The, that's the word. You know, any, any of those types of things I think would be pretty interesting for the game. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if they're doing that or not, if they might tie them all in the items, I'm not sure. But I think that having at least the ability to pick like one kind of game changing thing. Cause I mean even That's think about like word. Ignite. Right. Like yeah. if you had if Ignite you had would be Ignite, huge on mages, bro. Yeah, it would be cool. It would be cool as shit. And you could even make it so it would be because in League Ignite's like a point and click, right? Like if you if you don't want to go that route, you could I, there was an item in Paragon that was literally a ranged ignite you know had oh, about fireball. the same yeah had yep. about the same same range as ignite had a, does a morgus league. crosshair basically yeah and you just you just shot that thing out in a line and if you hit somebody good if you but you had to aim it so if you didn't hit anybody with it then i was like oh okay well i just wasted it so i think like having items like that that are that are more skillful or trinkets or whatever would be yeah. interesting for the game there's, what I'm this, afraid this of, but I think like... they're going to do is, do you guys remember things like Blink Shot? How do you guys feel about items like me. that? I'll just print it. Print like, it hey, you me, get please. a Blink within X amount of seconds of a kill, or you get a Blink, for example, the one that we have right now, QS, four seconds, as long as you haven't taken damage in the last four seconds. Like, very situational Blinks. Right. Do you guys prefer those, or do you guys think, like, that original ass Blink card should be a thing, where it's just like, pay the money, blink no situations whatsoever give, give me blink shot please. It's, it's not happening i've um, hey, i I've, want it so bad it's not happening i i tried i tried so hard with jam i was like yo give me blitz rush you know because blitz rush oh, yeah. was the one that like you know blink shot turned into where you had a short dash and if you you know and you buy it on adc and if you killed somebody within like five seconds after you use the dash, it would reset and you could dash again. I love that item. It was cool as shit. But I also understand that that's, that's pretty strong. That active is really strong. Like, oh, yeah. But the cost would have to be high or no stats or something like that. Right. Right. If you use it poorly, you know, it's one of those items that's got like a high skill cap. So if you use it poorly, like a lot of people will buy it and then just like make little use out of well, it. They wasted but, their flash. Now they don't have yeah. shit for 90 seconds. But if you, if you use it really, really well, then. It's like, okay, well. I mean, they already have half light item, don't they? What's, that what's was about to say, but you, but you act like we hey, don't have a Richter Sorry. already. Yeah, well, Blood Saber is a good one as far as mobility, Blood but it's yeah. not a full blink. Yeah. But yeah. No, I mean, you maybe act maybe like we don't have a Richter later, already man. QSing out of nowhere and pull or QSing all. Like, I'll be real with you. <laughs> Take all the stats off of that item. And then take away that four second. Oh, you can't be in combat for four seconds. 
and it's just as impactful. It can actually be used as a ghetto ghetto getaway, but at the end of the day, they're not getting mana, cooldown, whatever the fuck is on it. You feel me? Tower. Like, why would you give yeah. up such a strong mobility item stats on top of it? And then be like, oh, but it can't be used within four seconds, so that's our way to balance it. Right. So the, the and then they buff the range. I, Sorry, go ahead. Oh no, you're you're fine. The <laughs> one thing that I can say is that like, if you do something like that, if you make like a maybe it costs like a thousand gold and it just gives you the blank, then like people are gonna buy that. I, I imagine a lot of people are gonna buy that. You know, especially if it's something that they can use like in combat. Um, so a lot of people buy that, but then late game you're gonna like always sell it, and then nobody's gonna have blank. I think like maybe having that item like basically like the jungle the jungle items like if you want to put blink on an item like they have right now make it build into a full item that gives you less stats obviously it costs a lot because that active is really good and make make three versions of them make one for a tank make one for ad and make one for ap you know what i mean that way everybody has one they can build and they can keep it throughout the rest of the game if they want to instead of like Mm -hmm. just having one that that doesn't have any stats that eventually you're just gonna sell because that's like how it is on qs right now with belica i would love to keep qs throughout the entire game but i get my fifth item complete and i've got qs and it's like okay well now i'm gonna throw this card because yeah because it's you know now i don't have that that engage the playmaking potential that i had before so that kind of that 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 kind of sucks so i'll be honest as a carry main I'm okay with that. I, I, I'm <laughs> a okay with that. Be like, you know what? You want to be stronger? By all means, boo boo. But I don't need you stronger and with all that mobility. Yeah, but if you if you had it as a carry, then you see a Belka about to blink on you, and you could just do something like blink yeah, straight but, up in the air. But that's what blood saver. That the would that would be crazy. Now, oh, if blood saver could be targetable, talent. that would be crazy. I would say keep blood saber but instead of i'm just gonna randomly dash across the floor in that direction literally just have blood saber be a dash in whatever the fuck you're pointing i want to dash up into that area or you know what fucking tron me up these stairs scotty i don't know <laughs> beat me up scotty straight up into the sky like you said and then fall back down and be like too bad steel didn't do shit and i'm still standing next to him let's go right. so I actually kind of wanted to, to switch here real quick. By the way, everybody that's listening, if you guys have not gotten your pride avatars, go get them. They're only one matter each support. And I'll be real with you, like call me an uncultured swine. I saw all the different colors. I did not know what each one pertained to. To be honest, yeah. I actually I had to actually go into the game and be like, oh, okay. Asexual, transgender, rainbow, pansexual, non-binary, lesbian, bisexual. Cause I'll be real with you. I just didn't specifically update myself on all that but i will yeah. say i do kind of wish they would have mentioned which one it was in their patch update you know what i mean instead of just yeah. like have all the different colors here and then you get to find out again but you know that's just me being picky but what i really really want to change the subject to now this one oh, get, get ready guys this one might be on the You're controversial side the balance boys yes 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 we might it might be controversial right and this is honestly something that i've been when is, when is this not dude i know i know i know this is something that i've been getting asked consistently i've seen it get brought up more in the general chat and as three partners and a moderator and three out of four of us also being testers here mm. i want to talk Cooch. yeah i'm <laughs> sorry Cooch. <laughs> i want to talk about and i'm just going to use Gideon as an example we'll go through all these but I've had people come up and be like, okay, so Gideon, he's a menace. I can't find a single individual, you know, whether it be a partner that I've talked to, whether it be a community member that tells me Gideon is in a good spot right now as far as balance. Everybody thinks he's very strong, right? Yeah. Like that's a unanimous decision throughout the community. But at the same time, whenever somebody looks at me and it's like, okay, so Gideon has this issue right now with his passive, with his damage, etc. And the absolute best result that SMS could come up with was let's reduce that range on his right mouse button by 100 units. <laughs> like, you get me? Like, as a community member, 
I understand the frustration. As community figures that we are, it's just like, I'll be honest with you. I know how much goes into it. It's very hard for me to say, this is the pass that he needed when I know that this went through several phases of testing and went through developers. And then it like literally I I when I sit here and somebody asks me, it's like, hey, why did they only change that to Gideon? My only answer is I'll be real with you. This is probably what they want Gideon to be like if they haven't changed it or addressed it as far as damage, right. passive, etc. Like low key. I have I have I have answers. No, 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 I can imagine. And again, like we all have different perspectives, right? Besides Cooch, he's just like a community figure, non-tester perspective, right? Which is still valid yeah. and valuable, right? But it's just, I actually can't sit here and give an explanation as a community figure. I can't sit here and be like, hey, I support this decision. Like I, I like, I, it's a very tough position to be in. And then when, since we've been so open about, hey, there's de several different test testing phases, there's different tiers of testing that happen, etc. You know, like yeah. it, it's a small team, but effort is being put into testing, etc. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of time put into testing things. Yeah, I, I know that Armadillon probably has a good little spreadsheet he's about to throw at us because he, he usually has no, pretty good answers. I, I have a lot of changes that I, uh, I want to bring up about getting. OK, I, I want to actually start off with Cooch and then Sock. As yeah, far as 100%. perspective and opinion, going from the outside looking in, when somebody looks at you and they say, why is Gideon the way he is right now? Like, how do you feel about that? What would you say to people, et cetera? Uh, so the, the white knight in me has always been this way. Um, I look at it and I see there's a change. So they are doing something about it. Um, are they taking the long road there? Yes, they are taking the long road there because I agree with you. He does. He is out of all of the the mid landers. He's the strongest one right now, and he he has he has been the strongest one for patches. Um, but they are making changes. It's not like they're. It's not like literally he's been the strongest one and he hasn't had a nerf at all through all these patches. So he's been getting nerfed on. Um, so it, it's just they're taking the long road to get there uh where they're trying to and i understand that balance so you don't want to over nerf him to now all of a sudden he's just nerfed in the ground it's like okay now we got to bring him back it's almost that they're trying to like find that spot and then here we go we got him where we want and it's just taking longer that's the way i look at it and i understand it no i, mean, I agree i think that they've exactly what cooch has, has said they they've been I, I don't know how many patches it's been so far, but I feel like there's been <clears throat> multiple in a row where he's been kind of chipped away at a little so by before. little. Yeah. Like Kalari, so he's, he's been touched a lot. It, yeah, so. <laughs> that sounds so bad. <laughs> it, it does, but he's a, I don't think he's in a good spot right now, and he need, <laughs> it, it might sound horrible, but he needs to keep getting addressed. Just yeah, slowly, no, but he's, surely. He's going to keep getting chipped away, I think, until he gets to that point where he you know doesn't feel too because I, mean, I mean that passive is really is really strong you know what i mean yeah. like being able to cast a, a third damage ability on like a, a, a character that's got two two damage nukes basically is <clears throat> is pretty strong so yeah i mean it's gonna be hard to balance it but i also do think that out of all the characters that sms has done and changed he's been one of the more interesting ones with that passive so you know I, I I totally advocate for them taking creative freedom and taking risks when it comes to like uh, redoing some of these characters and you know yeah, trying to make them means. more interesting and complex because Paragon was super simple you know at the end of the day like the champs were just like pretty cut and paste like you know I mean you look at like Gideon Nuga Howie you look at Gadget they all like kind of are the same character they do kind of like they got a damage ability on their Q a damage like a, a, a movement a impaired movement. Yeah, yeah and then they have a and then slow, an AOE and then they have a giant AOE -ol. and in Paragon all those characters have the same scaling on all their abilities same mana costs same damage base damage like it was like okay so you guys like really went the lazy route with this you know you're like oh mm -hmm. we just make three of the same characters kind of reskin them make them do slightly different things and hopefully they won't notice you know so uh True. but you know I, I hope that i hope that they keep making characters like that and then if they're too strong like gideon or like kalari like kutra was saying like when she first came out like hopefully they just 
you know, because it's like fishtailing in a car, right? Like you don't want to like overcorrect, and then you're just gonna wreck. You know, it's the same thing with this. Right. Like you overcorrect, and nobody plays Gideon anymore, and then you know, somebody else dominates the scene for a while. Just slowly chip away at something until it becomes healthy. I like that term chip away it, to me you know it's a lot like you're you're trying to build a statue you know if you're literally and if you take a big chip out of it next thing you know his nose is off and it's now the statue is like not where you want it to be now we got to fix the nose or we got to you know do even more do it because we got to fix what we the mistake we made mm -hmm. if you t slowly chip away you can really fine-tune it and you know get that perfect nose you want and that now it's a beautiful statue it, it just mm -hmm. takes some time you're beautiful statue oh, <laughs> oh he called the, the old by saying a statue yo so armadillo is about to say his two pieces now i do want to just add one little thing on here just two pieces i mean well, no, no, he's, he, can, he can go on his usual rant if he wants to is it because i talk a lot <laughs> no 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 what i was gonna say is it is pretty normal in moba standards to overcorrect like we see it happen all the time it's like they're too strong change all right now they're not strong enough now let's meet back go back up towards the middle but how do you know where that middle section is unless you keep going back and forth and eventually get closer to that right. middle piece you feel me if you're way over here and you're like inch 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 it could right. literally be another three months until he's where we where we need him to be but if you go from here to here at least you know it was eh, we went a little bit too far Let's come back similar to what they've done on some other characters like Kalari, Boris, etc. I almost rather them actually go completely off the wall and be like, you know what? We did too much. Okay. Right. But like this whole inch and away, it almost it almost gives away the perspective of this this guy's broken as shit and they're barely making changes to him. Almost making it seem like given the perception that they want this man to stay broken. You feel me? Like Kalari didn't get I that treatment. That. I, Boris didn't get that treatment. They got nerfed hard and then they got buffed a little bit. You feel me? As right. it should be. It almost feels like don't they don't he's... want Gideon to get nerfed at all based off of what we've I guess seen. I could be wrong though. Boris and Kalari were definitely broken. I don't think. You think, think... Gideon isn't? Yeah. I don't think Gideon's broken. I think Gideon's overtuned, yes. Um, okay. I okay. I can. I, could, the, I, I can see the I don't think he's to the point where like, like you, I don't go into a match and guaranteed getting in every match. When Kalari was broken, you saw you were guaranteed getting Kalari. When Boris was broken, you guaranteed you're going. To, like, we're going against the Boris. So we got to you know it's pretty much put a Boris against the Boris to even have a chance to win the game. You know when mm -hmm. they had their points. Um, you can you can counter a Gideon. You know as long you know it just depends on how it goes. So it just. He's definitely overtuned, and he does need to get fixed. I, I mean, you see the number I'm just, showing right now? No, I can't see that. It's too small. Ninety-five percent pick rate on Gideon. Okay, and Mur what's Murdoch's pick rate? Seventy. Seventy-six. Broken? No, but here's the thing: so both so carries. Murdoch's changed. So Murdoch used to be ninety-two, something like that. So wait, wait, I'm oh, just saying, like, he wasn't broken at that time. Mur Murdoch. Murdoch. Okay, no. Anyway, what? I was about to say, if I'm wrong, tell me. I'm just saying, like, I know his, no. I know Murdoch's well, pick rate was well, really high, but he was never it, broken. Yeah. Well, you let know, me let me try and put it through this. Really say that. No, I get you. Let me try and just put it through this perspective. Then, if I see Murdoch at 76 and Twin Blast at 66, that lets me know that those are the two main carries, but there is diversity, right? Like right. that lets me know at least the pick rate amongst different people in that category, the carry category, is similar. Right right but when i see a right. gideon at 95 and the closest caster is at 56 that lets me to be leads me to believe that literally people are picking a gideon twice as much as the second closest caster no i i mean i, I agree i'm just saying like you're not it's not a guaranteed you're going against a gideon like that's what i'm saying like i back when those two like when we're talking about kalari and boris when they were literally broken mm -hmm. like you were it almost you you started matching you went to this the screen they you were too we were easy and ahead. everybody could stop yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's like all right we got this like you know you're going against a Kalara, you know you're going to boris either way you don't know that you're going against a, a, a gideon our time like it, it's happened I've, I've had plenty of games where i'm not going against a gideon you know i can pull up my match history and like probably count a bunch of games like i just didn't I go mean, against the gideon i feel you but then you probably had the gideon on your team three shotting everybody else on the other team 
You know what I'm saying? No, I lose there, too there's much. It doesn't. doesn't <laughs> there's <happen>. usually a Gideon <laughs> present. And I and I, and I, and I think very player. possible, very possible fix could easily be maybe changing the criteria, the qualification of that third rock. Because the fact that those two rocks hit so hard, you got to either choose to whether you're going to give that a, a high to us high skill player individual the opportunity to do a third rock at crazy damage or whether you're just going to make it more accessible to everybody to use his passive but then tone down to damage because it's a lot easier to actually do you know what I i'm saying think that, that later one should be good i think you you get a third rock but you're gonna you know it's what is that what did they say with the cdr when they brought it out it was that uh um what was that verbiage they used um did as far as what that, as far as like the, just like the, the conversion when they, CDR, what, what, when they cdr they want to bring it out they said it was a uh something return what was that return the point of diminishing Dimin return yeah. like yeah, diminished return so or like you get, yeah like, like why, your third one you get a diminished return on it a quick a quick fix why doesn't the third rock just do like reduce damage like half that's of the what, damage yeah, what, yeah. but you get a third rock yeah yeah, I think you could do something like that. I think like, you feel me? It's like, hey, you get that little bit of extra damage, but now I didn't hit you for two abilities that each did five to 600. It was five, five, and 250. So maybe somebody at full health is now last hit, or maybe you timed it right, and that third rock killed them because they were just at a little bit of health left. Like, yeah. why Why do three rocks at five to 600 each? For example, all right, Armadillo, go ahead. I'm unleashing you, go. Oh no, don't do it. <laughs> All right. Um, so yeah. A couple things first. Yeah, Gideon's a little nuts right now, and Gideon has been a little nuts for a while. Um, but I think I think one thing that's important is that when when you're looking at nerfing a character, especially like Gideon, there's a couple of like different factors that I no one's really brought up here, really. Is that number one, you have to make sure the character still feels good to play, right? So no matter okay. what, you have to make like you can't just be like, OK, your cast time, like the, the time it takes you to cast an ability is, is longer now. But now when you're playing getting it feels like garbage, right? There's mm -hmm. a bunch of like stupid nuance stuff like that, that like you don't really think about. You just think I just want them nerfed into to the ground. Right. But at the same time, that's still not a good look, especially when Gideon is the default caster you get when you first get into the game. Right. OK. And then you also you also got to look at there's there's a lot of different changes that have happened through the past month of balancing gideon so far that have each touched on different things and it's it's more about trying to make sure that each ability individually accomplishes what we want to accomplish it what want it to accomplish while also feeling good and right now the the, the range doesn't feel like much but like 1700 is now like a little bit over basic attack range right mm -hmm. with ace at least in my opinion because if you're not yeah, running ace on because a stupid. well um, let's just let's just use the example of anybody using like usually basic attack range is around 1450 to 1600 give or take right yeah so if you're grim you're just out yeah so within the art within that same argument you have a you have a gideon that has the right mouse button arguably scales way better than his normal rock drop from above and you get more effect out of it right because i'll be real yeah i i don't have a single complaint about that rock from above i think it chunks you it does a good amount of chunk the aoe is good but it's nothing that you just sit there and you're like god damn that rock is too strong you feel me yeah right so i don't i think his rock from above is in a good spot i think his right mouse button is a little bit busted right and then when we consider it's like okay so you have arguably the most powerful maze that can spam the most now he can throw those as far like he literally can be outside of basic attack range and still hit you I mean, he could do that before though but that's what i'm yeah, saying like I, I don't think he should have been able to before regardless unless he's somebody like gadget which has the range but at the reduced damage doesn't do the damage yeah i think um something else like there's so there's a lot of things that have been brought up about how to fix Gideon through multiple people. Like we've all had our opinions on like what we think is right from either making it. Yeah, so I can imagine. Damages are lower. His base damages are lower, but his third ability gets like a warlock proc where he has like 25% extra damage on that third rock he hits. So that third, you, your, your now goal it, as playing Gideon is to use that passive. Your damage comes from your passive. Mm -hmm. um, or the, then there's there's other ones where it's like. Uh, maybe reduce the range or the travel time of the RMB 
and maybe see how that does reduce the splash damage like we've done already and a bunch of other things right there's a bunch of different suggestions that are being thrown into a pot and it's more like just trying to figure out which one's correct and i think one thing i don't see enough people talking about it so i don't know if like this is just not something that like a lot of players think about that aren't like higher level players but the cast time on e change it yeah it's 0.1 second i understand it reads really bad right but that makes a difference it's actually kind of big um because it takes longer for the teleporter to come out a little bit longer for you to not get caught uh, on top of him having damage right i would be fine with him having damage if he wasn't able to just turn and jump on the top ropes of mid and get out of any gank every time right he is by far the safest mid laner because of the geometry in mid. He just goes, oh, bye. Have fun. I'm going to yeah. back while I'm up here. Or yeah. if you're going to position and try to Grux pull me, I'm just going to walk down my stairs and walk away. Right. So like stuff like that, that those are those nuanced parts that like that change the field of character affect everyone. But that's that's something that you need to look to. Like, I personally think that the mid the mid top ropes, even though they're fun to make plays off of, are one of the most unbalanced parts of the map for multi because with somebody like Grace gideon yeah graystone mid yeah. right lower elo players can't play it so you don't see a lot of complaining but higher elo players all they have to do is they have a faster wave clear level one and they are gank proof you can't gank him he just jumps on mm -hmm. the top ropes and laughs at you while he's up there right so like there's there's a lot of things like that that go more into balancing gideon especially because he he's like the he's like the baseline mage in my opinion he's if when i'm looking at gideon mm. i want gideon to be the model of what my mages all should aspire to be or like you know what i mean like this guy's the middle of the ground kind of like murdoch for the carry is and then like this guy's stronger but he loses this this guy's weaker but he has this kind of like the trade-offs and stuff like yep, that right. yeah so it's all about like there, there's a lot of changes <laughs> for Gideon. I can't say it stressed out enough. There's a lot of things that we're we're going through and like working on trying to balance him, but it's just a slow process to make sure that he feels like a character. Because yeah, we can just drop his all his damage to negative and throw him out there. But if he doesn't feel good to play, then there's no point in him being in the game. Well, I think, right. I, but I think with what we said, uh, just the the. I mean, I'm not saying it's easy. Yeah, because I don't know. Yeah. I don't test at all. Obviously, we pointed that out multiple times already this episode. Um, but I think I'll get just you in, changing. Buddy. I'll get you in. <laughs> I think just changing the the that third rock that you're the third ability you're able to do change. You know, give that diminished return on that. He still feels the same. You're still able to get you know because that's extra. That's not anything yeah. on it. And but he's not going to be as oppressive as he is. You know you. I, and a, a, we're all dual laners. You all of a sudden you got that Gideon that ganked. It's like, all right, now this is literally like, that's that's. I would rather see the jungler than so see the, see a Gideon. There's a couple things I have there, right? As a dual lane main, um, mages should come online about about third, as far as your tier, as far as your characters on, on the map. They should right. come online the third fastest in the game. It should be like supports tanks and then uh, mages, in my opinion. Supports okay. and tanks are pretty close, but I think supports, tanks, and mages are like their most powerful. Their power spikes should be in that order. Um, but I think that his his might just feel like it comes too early, and that might be either be due to base damages being too high or getting levels too fast because he's in a solo lane versus I'm in a duo lane and I, you know, I'm level two when he's level four and a half or five, rolling up in my lane or teleporting three rocking me. So right. but there's there's all the there's all those things that I look at as far as a as a carry main right that I can't like I don't know I don't know the answer there personally. I really Can I ask you guys a question off of that subject real quick? Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. How do you guys feel about the fact that we can upgrade one specific ability a third time before we're forced to put a second upgrade on something? I like it personally. Like but, yeah. here's the thing, I like it too. As a Murdoch, I love having that shotgun, right? As a Boom. Twin Blast, yeah. I love having that attack speed maxed out. But could that also be the issue with these mages? The fact that Gideon can have a level three rock hitting you at level seven, I think, or six, five. I don't remember yeah, the exact number. Be, 
but you get me maybe, like maybe the the scaling per five. level five so the scaling per level could easily be like you know what before any of us can get to a third shotgun which is really strong a third getting rock with this which is very strong before you can do that you're forced to make something else level two i think I could think that be a cool quality of life thing that we might low-key hate as experienced players but it might just be better for the overall state of the game i mean I, it's a that's that's still like a trade-off too because i mean like if you're if you're talking about like gideon specifically if you don't if, if you have it the way it was before then he's gonna have extra points in his rmb or whatever and right now it's like kind of doing like pretty comparable damage so like do you want one one ability like super maxed out and then if you're able to dodge that shit then like you know you're one at high or two at medium huge yeah a huge chunk of his damage like pretty much the majority of his damage i think the thing with gideon too is that like i mean maybe his scaling needs to come down like a little bit to compensate for the three rock combo and maybe make the three rock combo you know like the you got something like bellica right that's like Q R and being so you just look at like okay like how much damage is this doing when she's got like mana lens or whatever and then bring maybe Gideon's scalings down a little bit to where like if he hits a three rock combo he's gonna be doing more damage than this Bellica that's queuing an R and being or whatever but if he just hits the two abilities then it's maybe not quite as much you know that's what I mean strong. or maybe you know mm -hmm. so like yeah so like make it so you you have to play his passive with him. is clutch as far as your damage output. Yeah. I get you but yeah the, the one thing with him though is that like you know you, anytime you're addressing a problem with a character it's like okay do I do I like you have to like look at the root cause of like what what the issue is like to me when I look at Gideon anyway it's like he's very strong because he dominates lane um so maybe like reducing the range on his teleport and then also reducing the range on his abilities might make him a little bit unsafe he might you know he still has the same damage output but like he has to commit more to doing these things and he's a like less actually safe be play. within basic attack range to right. be able to and land something like, but he hurts right. like shit. right so then then you make the character you know maybe he doesn't dominate in lane as hard as he is right now the problem with him right now is that like his his ult is kind of useless like it, you you're never gonna get a full ult off on a team fight against like good people maybe maybe at like lower levels he could you know get away with it on CC, like on you know a tank yeah it happens down on my levels you're right <laughs> i'm not saying that I'm just saying, you know when you look at like balance it's like it, at least um, in like the the higher level games like it's pretty widely considered that like gideon's ult is like pretty useless and you should just like ability yeah. yeah you should just like rock as much as possible and then like the last resort you use yeah, the ult, and high you know? yeah and in high elos it's, for a it's shield for the shield it's, yeah he's yeah. yeah yeah he's just gonna go in there and and use that and then just get cc'd out of it immediately and right. like, okay. and no and that's how it is with paragon didn't he have like a a shield when he went up or something that kind of you had to do a double cc no he something? didn't negative what he uh, didn't in, he, in monolith he, after a while he did a stun if you were inside of his, his aoe and it pulled you in so if you were in but, his aoe but you, that's what a way yeah, okay that's, that one. but it kind sure of the biggie bag off of what you were saying sock because his ultimate means he has to get close and personal yeah. to be able to use it just like if he, if his rocks were reduced in range at least to the point like make it like 100 units beneath let's say if somebody's running ace they can out poke the gideon rock if they're not running ace they're like just a little bit short you feel me like that sweet spot of like 1500 units maybe to uh -huh. where now if he wants to apply his kit he has to expose himself like his ultimate. Oh, Discord kind of tripping out. Right. Just, like, Discord froze up. Yeah, yeah, Discord froze up. Yeah. Okay. But, but you get what I'm saying? Like, maybe that's it. Maybe instead of focusing more on the actual damage numbers, if you, and like Sak was saying, if you significantly change the kit, take liberty on it. And be like hey you know what gideon used to be this i'm gonna throw shit from far away type of guy but the way that he's designed right now maybe i'm just gonna throw shit at mid-range i'm in i'm in more of a dangerous spot but i also can do have the potential to do more damage i have i have a list of like nerfs that i personally want to see um one of which is very controversial and i've been kind of told that 
it it that it's kind of a silly idea uh, because he needs this but i'm just gonna stick on hard on it because that's just how i am i want to um, hear it I'm, I'm getting i'm getting ready to shit talk you let's go all right, right? i want to hear it <laughs> you ready say it you ready for this take the slow off his passive it's stupid he doesn't need it all it does is allow lower elo players to hit his full combo with very 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 little Neat, you're, right? you're not wrong the I fact think... that he already has a third rock like or low key take the third rock away and just make it so his ability slow every time he throws he lands something no no because that's just that's his gadget um you're right like, but I, i'm i'm okay with i'm okay with like i just think that this is gonna sound kind of like i'm dissing people but the thought process for, for me is if he's gonna have that passive where he gets a third ability off of cooldown at full damage he needs to be able it needs to be more of a skillful situation and i think the slow takes a lot of the skill out of it now the slow does add things like uh chase potential or like when you're getting away turn around throw a rock slow him and leave right so it does it does add a little bit to it but what it adds i don't think it it adds enough to actually matter i think it no, i agree does, with you does more harm in my opinion um definitely yeah, changes that skill that's gap the controversial one that's the one that it's like i've i've I, seen very little people that agree with me so i'll be real agree with you i'm because, okay with that yeah the reason i agree with you is because you said the slow adds it to where you can you know you if you're chasing you're able to catch and then or if you're trying to get away you're able to slow him to get away what's his e for he has a teleport right. he already has that like you don't need he can slow you them. he can dash yeah. like crazy he you know can land rocks like crazy so it's not like you if not like you take that slow away now he's got no way to get on to catch somebody you know he literally still has that ability he still has it in his kit to be able to do that so i'm okay with that yeah i mean i don't think that's controversial i don't know i mean i'm looking at the numbers right now this passive slow starts off at 24 and tops out at 40 percent when he's max level 40 percent is pretty a lot dude a, that's yeah, crazy huge, bro it's a huge slow and that... especially late game when you're doing damage hey. like a lot of damage to get in and yeah. you hit two rocks on somebody then can, they're like the, can they're you find really out how much the gadget right mouse button does in comparison i think uh, like yeah. the largest thing for me is Again, I'm sorry for people in Cooch's ELO who, like, need this as a crutch, but it, all, it, all it does to me, as I read it on paper, all it does to me is tell me that it, I'm, it's this not is here hard to make hit. it easier to hit my combo. Yeah. And to me, that is not a good design decision. Yeah. Now, I understand that there's a lot of mages that need that, that Wait. CC is like a, a kit, a kit thing that mages have a lot of or like have at least have something of generally speaking in most in most MOBA terms right however I just don't think in his the way his kit works he doesn't need the slow um and then uh, uh my personal opinion I think that opposite of what Cooch is saying I think that the bonus rock should do more damage but his base damages be a little bit lower because I want I want his passive because how strong his passive is to be the main focus of his kit to be the thing that 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 you you have to be as a good Gideon you know when and where to use this and and you know this is how I maximize my damage right it's kind of like how Countess's Countess's uh siphon uh damages where you, you you get on the next ability so you have to really like plan out your roots of your abilities to get the max use in the certain situations right. at least mm -hmm. with the extra damage being on the third rock you're like you're more committed to throwing three rocks because half the time I die in two anyway right like the third doesn't isn't really necessary at three quarters of the time right, right. now i feel like the third I mean, rock okay is the most influential way. yeah i'm okay with it either way i'm just you know that was just a way of of balancing him as of yeah. right now because like the really when it comes down to him it's it's the three rocks that really is what makes him so oppressive so however you want to balance that if you want to take it off of the first two rocks they don't do as much damage and that third rock does more then fine but for all three of them to do the amount of damage they're doing is just it makes it That's too hard I'm, to deal with especially with people play warlock which by the way don't play queen play warlock and magician anyway but yeah so but it's just to a little too easy answer your Go question when do it's uh 30 percent slow but with the difference so 10 slow Faster, well, but, but that's more slow. but that's the, on the only one ability on gadget for right. you to get 60 percent slow with matter limiter on her right click and then 
30% slow on all abilities, you have to build an item. With Gideon, you're at 40% slow on all abilities without an item. Well, the difference between Gideon is it's a decaying slow, so it'll go from 40%, it's over two seconds, so 40% to 0% in two seconds, whereas Gadget's a little bit less, but it it reapplies that slow every half second and every take uh, RMB, uh, yeah, that thing lasts button. for like four seconds i think something like yeah. that yeah. so you can potentially keep somebody at a 30 percent slow for like I mean, four seconds if they get matter limiter the matter limiter slow also stacks on top of that slow right yeah. and, and that's on a lower cooldown than gideon passive that's not supposed to be happening you know that's just slows aren't supposed to be stacking they just do because it's paragon had the same problem with it i imagine predecessor will uh, with the way the like i guess like unreal just applying engine the values yeah, yeah it's unreal just engine. it's like really yeah. weird to like get it to work correctly but yeah it's supposed to you're, you're supposed to just only apply like the strongest slow they're not ever supposed to stack so i don't know if you guys noticed uh this wasn't in the patch notes but it definitely got changed but we were having an issue with uh attack speed was not being applied the right way so like i noticed on a murdoch game that i was like you know what low-key like my homeboy still hidden slow as hell even after building yeah. a little attack speed so i just literally stopped building it for that day to be honest yeah so so attack speed before was like i think multiplicative i guess is what i was told so like the if you had like a definition att attacks yeah i don't know what the definition is. <laughs> I, I just know that if you had a it's too hard for i'm from southwest virginia stacking 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 i'm from southwest virginia which I'm, I'm uneducated i just know that if you had an item that gave you attack speed and attack speed stem or buff then that's really good because they're like multiplying <laughs> off of each other somehow now it doesn't do that now it's actually giving you like the flat values that the item and the the uh, the uh attack speed buffer like giving you so like you'll notice that like if you buy like red boots on tv and you use your right click you're not getting as much attack speed as before which is it's just good same thing like boris like boris um if you right have like button. red boot yeah so like boris before i'm pretty sure if you had crossbow and boots and you queued just a level one q and you had crossbow yeah. and boots it was maxing out your attack speed so you're getting the maximum amount of attack speed you're getting like what is that yep. like a, an attack every 0.4 seconds yeah once, like once they hit once they hit like 45 percent you're at max attack speed which is part of the reason why he was so busted yeah, yeah i'm not against so, that change though like yeah, so the fact that yeah the shit. fact that anything that it amplifies your attack speed you know sparrow e we got what else uh twin blast right mouse button for example mm. If you decide to build crazy attack speed and then press all those abilities, it can get a little out of line, which did make, for example, Twin Blast a fucking menace for a good minute yeah. there also. Yeah, yeah. When when TB like hit hit a six and had crossbow, like I remember this so many times where I've been playing TB and I just get I just get crossbow and I hit six and it's like time to just go in G -G. You know? <laughs> yeah. and if the other carry didn't you know if it's like a murdoch even if they had crossbow they're like oh shit you know, like, no yeah you don't at me and just, bah, 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 you know you better hope they know, miss a I few shots for I real i literally have my old ventilate alt just on my autos right now have fun yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what i was saying like when i was playing murdoch i heavily noticed like literally bit i what was it i was playing against a twin blast and i arguably feel like as a murdoch half the time you have to build up some attack speed just to keep up with twin blast because it's dps overall it's kind of nutty yeah. right like if you choose i don't know let's say for example to pick an item that does not give you attack speed i mean to pick an item that gives you attack speed over an item that just gives you per pure like damage and pen right you're almost setting yourself behind beforehand against a twin blast where now if i decide to full go full damage and crit murdoch against a twin blast i might still stand a chance if that there's makes some sense. items yeah there's some items too that with the attack speed changes and the buffs like like a uh, infernal gun blade got buffed um yeah that's another one of those slow burner we're trying to find the right spot for it right so like it shoot. still feels medium to me but yeah i mean it might it might be something that because i mean it's good against like squishies so you can like the website isn't updated. I think you're getting more than 10 flat pen now on the yeah, um, now it's um, 15, I think. Well, if wait on Infernal Gunblade, it's like stat wise. 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so physical check, penetration check. per so stack increases it was... four to five. It's per yes. stack is five. Your max is still your max is fifteen, which is three higher than it was before because it was a four. Per and you stack. still get the flat ten, um, or you don't get the flat ten. Yeah, you st you should still get the flat ten. I'm just double checking real quick. Okay. So I'll be real. Good. Some of the items changes. I'm. I'm pretty okay with like even little things like Argus Cataphract CDR went from 20 points to 25 points, right? Yeah, you still, um, sorry, you still get the flat 10. You? Um, so you're, okay. you're maxing out 25 10 on the item and at full uh, stacks. Well, um, big thing about that, sorry, I don't mean to keep interrupting. No, you you're good, you're good. Um, this isn't this the big thing about a gunblade, uh, that people I think don't read correctly is that it doesn't have to be three hits against that same target it's not cons it's not like consecutive hits of the same target so if you're you can stack it up on minions and then shoot the hero oh okay i thought i didn't think it was same target i thought bro i'll do be away, honest with you red, i never even realized that in the wording yeah i didn't yeah, i didn't either <laughs> yeah it's uh, just i it thought just it was off it, everything i thought it was either like, like either turn of left. The two heroes okay in, in like uh i thought you had to hit like the support or the or you know uh the just carry. somebody Nah, it's stacks are oh, running, stacks yeah. off towers, stacks off minions, stacks off objectives. Doesn't matter. Okay. That changes everything. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, so it's literally yeah, like twin right. blast movement buff. As long as you're hitting something, yep. It, yep. you're getting the stack. Dope. Yep. So Thanks to know. You stack. heard it here. So, and it's, it's, it's a... hit something. Hit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, yeah. And you can get, so you can get like a. Yo, Discord's I feel tripping like out. There might be some some carries that can build that first item. Um, Discord is maybe. And Dude, yeah. freaking out. Dude, what the heck's going? Or, uh... oh. And Discord's hating you right now, Window. Yeah, oh, no. no, no, no. I can oh, see no. it. It's it's literally blinking on my side, freezing like crazy. I don't know, my yeah, friend. Yeah. It is. I don't like the way it looks. <laughs> Oh. It's weird though, because like us three are perfectly fine. It's only yours that yeah. uh, that we see that it's. it's no, yeah, too. yeah. I don't, I, I don't know. I just know that on my side, everybody's gonna see everybody freezing. So. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> right. At least it's Sorry, consistent. Viewers, but hey, if we're you're still watching, talking. turn on the strobe lights. It'll go with it. Don't worry about it. I'm so <laughs> done with you, bro. <laughs> I, I, I definitely think on someone like Twin Blast in a situation where I'm like kind of just murdering lane. I think I just take it every time first. In my opinion. Your crossbow is so big, but I, I want to take this now. I just that's what really I do. I've literally yeah, for the I, past I, I like I do. ever since the favorite rework, I've been starting uh, Phantom Blade on a carry every single time. That's fair. I go Phantom Blade, Red Boots, and then D Blade, and I I very selective matches where I've actually lost lane because the extra I mean, movement Phantom speed Blade's is crazy. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, the damage, like the pen, man. you slow them with the active on basic attacks, and then out of combat, you have extra movement. So, like, if my support lands a stun, I'm there to capitalize even faster. Right. Like, it, I'll be real with you. Kind of, kind of poggers to try it out. But I, I like all the Wait. item chain, item balances. To be honest, like, when I see some of these item balances, I can be like, you know what? I understand. They're trying to find a better spot for it, stuff like that. Like, I really, really get it. Like, for example, Grim's Q, the displacement range. That shit feels not great. Even, not, not range. The, how uh, far it pushes the it. Knockback. Well, the strength of it, yeah. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The range after it lands. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah, it. like, I love it. it. It feels great. It honestly feels great. You don't do that much damage. On that bait on that basic yellow stance q right it's yeah. it, but you can easily affect somebody's last hits with it it can be used more of a poke now like it, i like little changes like that right i'll be real one change that i looked at and i was like i don't even see why they did this was a richter e let's increase his range by a whole 60 units on his e it like i'll be real man i saw that and i was like i just can't understand why they might have looked and said yeah that's that's the change richter needed that would made him feel better um, for me you know it helps a make lot it. it helps a lot jungle camps make that it. little bit of radius is actually huge 
Make it map wide. You just hit your, you just hit everything on the map. Everything yeah. just gets electrified. <laughs> you just like do this and everything's just an electric field going yeah. everywhere. Oh god. Bro, you imagine if they change the dude's ultimate as soon as he taps it, every player on the map gets CC'd on, on the spot. It just everyone gets stunned on. Uh, uh, uh. Right? Know, like, like, by like 0.5 seconds. Nothing even crazy, but if somebody's under the tower, imagine under the tower getting that CC lock. Just like. That would Fuck suck. an extra tower hit for no reason. That's it, one thing we just, don't need. That's just something crazy. I know. Global alts, though. Get me out. <laughs> See, I I don't I mind know. global alts. I just think they're so hard to balance. You feel me? Like yeah, in ra uh, range in general, whenever you're considering all this verticality and whatnot, Gideon's teleport being a great example of that, or even um the gadget right mouse button right. Like gadget's right mouse button has a great range. But when you consider all the different environment, the collision with it, it just, it adds so much. You feel me? Like so many variables that like, hey, I throw my right mouse button way up there. Great. Now the bottom end of this cone is literally 10 feet off the ground. And now it's not hitting anybody because it nicked the corner up there. Now it's just big chilling, yeah. Yeah. So i'm okay with range i'm okay with even global ults right it's just when you make a global ult arguably a little bit too impactful like kalari for example the fact that you get to travel across the map and gank somebody for free but then on top of that you're adding extra damage on top of that you're adding stats you feel me stuff like that gets a little bit harder to balance but right. if you're giving somebody that much mobility it they shouldn't have other stuff tagged along again my point yeah. my point with the qs item if you're giving somebody that mobility you shouldn't have mana and damage and like make it a trade-off just like yeah. i agree but the it's, i just like get rid of uh Kalari global I, I hate having a global yeah. an assassin I, or like I, do it like a nocturne's ult in league where like yeah it was, it's it's semi-global like it has like like early, like grim but range. You still have, <clears throat> well, it's like it. You if get more honest. more range. Like like if you max level like when when Nocturne like max levels is R. If I'm remembering correctly, like you pretty much have a global. Ult, but like the first level and the second level, like you still you would have to be like in the river on that side of the map to ult do a lane. You know what I mean? Like you would have to be in that area to do yeah. it. So you that could, would be you fine. Be like all yeah. the way in solo lane, ganking solo laner and be like, oh look there's free food over there and then just like all of a sudden just yeah just appear there and yeah. and get fed it's like okay well. yeah it's um that'd be cool not nocturne it's it's almost like you get half the map range on her on his ult right but so would people be okay right. with that on muriel for example that's what like it's like go it's like it's like hey with my <laughs> ultimate i can save mid but i can't save solo unless i decide to rotate over or unless it's a higher tier of the, an upgrade yeah, I don't know. There, I mean, I know. there's benefits in having like global ults. I don't think you have to like get rid of all truly global ults. I think Muriel's ult would be like kind of pretty bad if she couldn't go to anybody and give shields. No, like, I, mean, you know. I agree. Can we give Grim the line of sight ult back? Like, I love all this chasing potential, being able to go, you know, like on the other side of a wall, you cast it, it fucking follows them through the jungle. Kind of cool, but I'll be real. I think there's much more technical applicability, I guess would be the word I would kind of search for. Like when you have to see somebody to ult, but as long as you can see them, you can ult them. Like if they're on T2 and you're on the, like the river, but you have line of sight, you can ult them. But a counter argument, if they're five feet away, but they're behind the fog wall, I can't ult them because I can't see them. Right. I'd much rather have that because I've gotten way too many kills as a Grim where it's like, hey, my jungler got invaded. They're fighting each other. I'm not even I don't even have line of sight, but I'm still at my T1 tower ready. I'm like, all right, he's getting low. He's getting low. He's getting low. Stole the kill. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. think that I, I don't know. I, I, I disagree. Just a personal preference, but I think I think the range is like kind of kind of right, in my opinion. Because in your situation, Windu, right? If if I'm the jungler and I'm ch taking this fight, I know you're level six, right? 
-hmm. so like i know that you you don't have to be there to be there so i have i if i'm not taking that into account and i lose that fight because of it that's my fault um okay because like right now like grim's short range grim's range on his r is definitely shorter than i thought it was like i then i remember it being it's shorter it's pretty damn that's short but you you can't it aim it from t1 to t1 you have to actually uh, walk up on the I'm, ledge to be able to land it. You gotta be like yeah, and I'm okay. at I'm river okay. to hit somebody at the at the tower. Or, I'm okay with that because you can't dodge it. I can see you that. You can't do anything to dodge it. I'm fine with it. Which is a I good counter argument because you you have to expose yourself to use it within range, yeah. right? You have to at least be within well, a certain range. I can shoot you through a wall in the jungle, but then I'm then I'm not in the best position, generally speaking, to actually do anything in the fight. It does pretty right. mad damage unless I'm building blue. It doesn't have really good AD scaling. Yeah. Which is so interesting, right? Have a stance switcher, but that stance switcher scales off of energy, but kind of scales off of normal attacks also. And then you have one of good. one of his stances can shoot through a wall and apply ability penetration. One stance applies a slow, and then another stance applies a displacement. I absolutely love grim's overall kit and the liberties that they took with it because grim needed some fucking love compared to how he was by all means yeah. like homie was like the most neglected carry he literally was a fridge you only opened it to I eat didn't, like when i played paragon i didn't know he was a carry <laughs> he was never played. <laughs> I mean, touche. and when i and when i did see him play he was played mid yeah so that's where i saw i thought he was a mid laner as the kid's been playing, you play Paragon for like six months. He sees Grim for the first time. He's like, "What the fuck is this thing? <laughs> Where does this come from?" You know, right? Yeah, so. I think I love. That's a great example of creative freedom. I think. Yeah, I, I think they did a good yeah. job on this. I don't think yeah, he's think overly Grim. broken. I think he's a very situational character, but can excel as well. No, yeah. there are things that I have I have issues with his R and B, but hopefully those will get fixed. Yeah. That's another story quite yeah. frankly no i like i like what they do with them it definitely takes skill uh to use them it's uh, you know because you have to understand what mode you're in to know what you know what you're right be able to switch doing, between those properly what, what your cues do and then you got to be able to cycle it to get the one you want to do like because there's one that's just going to do more damage and you're like next thing you know you're on the wrong one so you're not doing the damage you thought you're doing and now you're like okay i know i gotta get out because i thought i was going to kill the person and now i'm in a bad position mm -hmm. i mean there's I think, even I think he'll be he'll be more interesting too when they add like hybrid items that do like a mix of AP and AD. Like that will be yeah. kind of interesting. AP AD or like an attack speed AP item. Yeah. AP is a uh, ability ability pen, a right? Ability, ability power. power. Mm -hmm. Oh, power. Okay, ability power, power and then yeah. ability damage. Attack yeah, damage. Uh, attack yeah, damage. Okay. His passive is like what is it, like every third auto or fourth auto. He's like proccing uh, ability damage basically on. Yeah, he gets uh, a burst of ability damage on auto. Um, he gets yeah. a little bit, a little bit per auto. He shoots regularly, but then on that fourth shot on the same yeah. on the same target, it's a big explosion of damage that scales right. with AP. So gotcha. yeah, I think he'll be I think he'll be a lot better when he's in the the benefit like Cooch, I guess of, of building like a, or having like a hybrid carry like that is it's like uh, they're hard to like itemize against. So you can't like if you're a tank or whatever, you're like okay, well. This guy's now fed. He's doing AP and AD at the same time. Like I'm building like a little bit of armor right now to help with the AD. What but do he's you still do? Doing like magic, magic damage. So, yeah. Until awesome. until Grim gets some some items that really like help him out. Like like you're saying, armor like a AP attack speed item. Um, they have some of those in League, like Nasher's Tooth. And you get something like that would help him out quite a bit. Yeah. Hundred um, percent. I'll be real, like if unless you're going full blue grim, I've had the most success just building a traditional red grim with blue boots. I I don't go blue boots because I think the attack speed is nuts because the red stance is so powerful. I just want to get to max attack speed as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. Um, but I agree. I think red is red is the better thing to go unless get, you're like. That's a good point. Light. Like if you're going, like if you're utilizing red stance like crazy red boots would definitely make a huge difference i do see a lot of people just kind of stick to blue stance whenever they're fighting and if you're yeah. well if you use blue boots with blue stance like i'll be real with you in a fight 
I almost never use my red stance if I build blue boots. I'm literally between yellow to charge my shit up. And then as soon as I got enough abilities, I switch back to blue. I do the, the blue Q, which does the uh, the ability armor shred. And then you got the ultimate right there. But, but regardless, in blue stance also, you do more energy damage. Which the blue boots help you apply more ability damage regardless. Yeah. It's, oh. um... Yeah, for this is going to be weird carry talk, so I'm sorry to all the people that don't know. Um, but in <laughs> right. general, in general, my personal experience with it, uh, especially I've been playing a lot more Grim as of late, uh, ever since this 40% knock up knockback, because I was using the yellow queue like Madden lane. Um, mm -hmm. so now that it has a higher increased knockback, I've been really enjoying it. Um, I use it as like a substitute for the red queue, probably more than I should, but the like in every fight that I take. I'm I'm in red stance until I hit my fourth auto. When I'm about to hit him on my fourth auto, I switch to yellow because it gives you back more energy, and then switch back to red, and just keep shooting machine gunning them so I never run out of energy. And then I have the slow queue so they don't get away. Um, yeah, but that's the beautiful part but, about having a chance a stance changing hero, the yeah, fact that you can it, play no them very differently. Play exactly. Yeah, and like he accomplishes so much. I like I just like the way. His, he's also like he does hybrid damage but he's not dummy powerful right like when he gets items he, he scales pretty well but then he also has very long cooldowns if, you, if you're building blue like his blue Q cooldown is actually pretty large so are the are the cooldowns not the same for all modes for no. the Q okay and cool, cooldowns and energy costs are not the same for the modes okay and you also get uh cooldown shaved off of your Q if you uh, R&B something. So let's say I use a blue Q, but then I switch to red stance. Is it still the same cooldown as it was for the blue or okay? Yeah. You don't get to shave off by switching stances. <laughs> I mean, obviously imagine. that would be broken if you could do that. I'm just, I wanted yeah. to make sure. I, I, don't, I, I didn't know that's what it was. I just wanted to like see how it worked. Uh, yep. Okay. Yep. Interesting. That's that's why I like playing Grim. I like playing Grim into Murdoch because Murdoch's like throwing traps in lane, which like is always correct in my opinion. But I just absorb it with my shield and get my Q back. So let me ask you guys: What item do you guys want to see next added? Since we're seeing a new influx of items being added every two weeks. I want all flame item. I want, all flame item. I want blink items for all the all the classes. That's what I want. <laughs> yeah, but. I want I want blink shot, but it's never gonna happen. So I'll just give it up and blink <laughs> items as a whole. Um, honestly, like uh, aside from like blink items, maybe um, I wouldn't mind having like a tank mana item. So like uh, something like the equivalent tank of like mana. frozen heart. Yeah, like something like the equivalent oh. of like frozen frozen heart and. In uh, yeah. league, yeah. where it yeah, gives but... you like a huge chunk of armor, like a hundred armor, and you're getting mana, and you're getting uh, like frozen heart in league gives you the same. I was gonna say, same, I always thought uh, that Argus Cataphract was default version of frozen heart. It was well, sort of is. It just doesn't give you. It any just mana. doesn't give you mana. The mana is the mm -hmm. big thing. Yeah, or, or it doesn't having... give you any damage. It just gives you. But isn't that like the thing that you don't want to see? You don't want something that gives you health and mana at the same time. Like that's well, it isn't that like a health. broken it item? Doesn't, it like, doesn't give well, you health. yeah, yeah but that that, right. that would that right. would be the counter. You don't get health, or you're not getting power. Also, that was a yeah, lot of the issues with a lot of the beginning items, like the fact that mana muzzle gave you so much power, so much cooldown. Like it was just too much on one. You feel me? Like right. all Animals. items should be a trade-off item. Like for example. I'm getting stronger as a carry, but I'm still a glass can. Like when you have right. items and builds, for example, like T Fist, along with Titan, along with you get what I'm saying? Like you're getting tankier and more power. That's when it starts getting a little bit well, weird. Yeah, right. I mean that's that that's where like that's those those are to me brawler items, those aren't tank items, and that's my issue is that there's not enough tank items in the game. I wouldn't I wouldn't mind seeing some carry items that are more defensive in nature like uh mm -hmm. mages mages have um you know they got the uh like, shield, like nirvana the jewel they have, they have yeah they got card. nirvana jewel and they got a uh, like warrior just nirvana jewel and they got that new item the amulet or whatever so something mm -hmm. like that like uh, life someone 
maybe like a, a GA, maybe not have the same active as GA, I don't know, but like have something that gives like a little bit of armor for carries and then a little bit of uh, damage. Um, or well, boots would be an interesting side because, for example, League has you know different boots that give you different things like there's an attack speed boots there's a power boot you could literally like i've done carry multiple times where i grab physical armor boots and that just yeah. helps me have more sustain in lane while the rest of my items are damaged you feel me yeah you just grab steel plates yeah steel caps or whatever it, it is they also have um basically the equivalent one thing that i would like to see for carries too is the equivalent of like you mantle on a carry item so they have like the Clans. was it mercurials or whatever it's called in league yeah, Mercur it's, Mercur yeah. yeah so it's giving you basically mr and ad so you're getting the magic resist and you're getting the the attack damage and then you have an active that's like a self cleanse so if you get cc'd as a carry you can cleanse it you know and, and you don't have to necessarily rely on your support because it's pretty frustrating playing carry yeah sometimes just, you know yeah and it's just like okay dude like my support just keeps leaving me like or he's just like yeah, he's just you know twiddling his thumbs you know over you know that would keep... help with the the counter to uh uh to richter everybody's gonna yeah. complain about how richter is owning the dual lane as a support you know with that pull it's like an instant death with that pull don't so get hit you have well, I, yes, I get that. All right, and that's. But I'm just saying, like that. If you had something like that, you could, you know, that would be a good situation. Because yeah. if you timed it right, as soon as he landed that pull, if you hit the cleanse, you wouldn't go the full distance, right? You'd be like, nope, or, I did it. Yeah, I stopped her. Is that how that would work, or no? Or I, just I, prevent I, it I, in general. Displacements, displacements aren't. Well, I don't think count the CCs for cleanses. The okay. stun afterwards would not would not happen. You could. Okay. You, they could try to code it in a way to, where yeah, you could I, like. You could, because those items too, like they should give you. They should. You should be able to use it when you're when you're CC'd, so you can cleanse the CC. But then, also, you should be able to like pre-fire it and have like a point oh, five window. Yeah, like a point five second window to just just use it as you're about to get hit by a CC and you just don't get CC'd at all. So if you right. if you did that. I think it would be fine to just like, you know, oh, I'm about to get hit by this Richter hook and you just press it and then you just get hit by it, take the damage and you don't get pulled. Purity beads and smite is a great example of that. Yeah. You I can hate, preemptively hate, like, use it and everything. Sorry, go ahead. You're good. Um, I hate I hate kind of quoting like league because a lot of people are like, I'm seeing a lot of league come into fault at the moment. And I understand. Well, it's where been that's very from. heavily inspired by League the entire time. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, is it, uh, is League not the number one MOBA there is right now? It, it is. Like, it is. So, it's the I mean, biggest market the to try and penetrate. MOBA, so, uh, why wouldn't we want to be inspired by that? Because we're inspired I'm not, by I'm Paragon, not. Cooch. Um, but no, uh, <laughs> a big thing. Where do you think big... Paragon was inspired? <laughs> no, I don't know. no um, a big thing for me is that. At, if anybody who's played League and like was playing League around this item shot, this item shop change and like the new, the newer uh, carry items and stuff like that, as a carry player, I 100% agree with that change in philosophy as far as that game is concerned. Where I want more ability, self agency, and self control over the game, right? Because even as a carry, unless like, unless I am so heavily skill diffed. It, like I'm just so I'm just better than both laners on the other team, right? The lane once you start reaching the even to like slightly better, your support carries a lot of the lane, and a lot of your a lot of your stuff matters on your support, right? Like almost almost everything does once yeah. you start reaching more more equal matches. And I I just me personally as a carry player, I want more agency over that. I want to be able to be like, all right, well my support is like off doing something else. I I can now play this person by doing this or building this or something like that. Like, I want more of that as an ADC player. Like, right. I'm okay with all these items, but if I have more utility items or more ways to, like, let my skill shine through versus just I point and click your head, I'm happy about it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I think it, I think it would help out. I, I may agree with you that right now the dual lane is, like, very, very, like, uh, heavily, like, support dominated. So if you have a really bad support, then it's, like, can be support pretty rough. is huge 
yeah, it can be pretty rough going into that. I mean, I've, I've had games against like really good carries, like notable carries in the community. And, you know, I've been playing carry and I've had a really good support, like a notable support and they don't, and they just get just hard dumpstered. You know what I mean? And it's like, yeah, I'm not doing anything. I'm literally just shooting this no, dude. I'm pointing your head. That's your, it. I'm yeah, just, I'm just, yeah, your follow up. I'm just, I'm just, yeah. Yeah, I'm literally just there after my support makes a play, you know? Yeah. Um, so, but you know, it is what it is. And unfortunately right now it's just, like a, I don't know, somebody that is like a, you know, I'm definitely well, like a hardcore support man. This is not like, I see it all the time. It's just not very many like supports that know like when to go in, when to make plays, stuff like that. And if you're playing like something like Decker, Muriel or whatever, like those are the two most like aggressive damage dealing supports yeah. like in the game right now. And like, Muriel, like, one of those, well, like, it doesn't help that the that, majority but, of the difference like the majority of the laning difference that happens is before you even get a third item on. Like by the time your third item comes on, it's already 20 minutes deep. Well, that's because su supports should be strong level one, right? Like support, again, supports should be the first ones to spike in the game. So like, I shouldn't be worried about me item wise dependent at, at level one, right? Like supports should dominate that lane level one. But once I start, once they start roaming and leaving me by myself or like, or if you have, God forbid, you have those deckers that throw their stun ball on cooldown no matter what. Um, I don't know. Like, I, I want to build. I, I just KS on accident. I'm like, oh, you, you, you got this? Let me stun him for you. Even oh, worse, shit. bro. I, oh, guys, I'm like I literally was just trying to stop. I'm like, I was helping you out, and then it happened. <laughs> It's like, I don't yeah, trust but, you to get it. <laughs> you're, you're, you're fucking on point with those Decker stun balls, though. <laughs> yeah. I'd take that any day. Yeah. So. There, there, yeah, there's a lot of things to, like, commu like community-wise as far as, like, learn teaching things that we could go on and on about. But as a whole, mm -hmm. like, that that's what I want. I just want more agency over my gameplay. I want to be able to yeah. itemize to, to better outskill my opponent. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Arma, you said you wanted, like, solo... Uh like yep. more, more solo lane items uh and i agree with that i don't know if it's more of solo lane items i mean i do want some more solo items but i we also need and i know they said they're not i really feel like the heroes, game is full of solo lane items though well, i think it's more like tank items to me there's, like there's I, a lot of brawler items again which solo lane leans to but there's no tank items i almost think we need more solo laners too like i know they said they're, they're not working on heroes anytime soon right now or whatever but like that like we literally have a limited amount of solo laners. No, you don't. Every every character is solo laner right now. <laughs> um, Touche. About. And again, that's I think that's uh, that will help with that range meta a little bit. Like you're gonna get people who are gonna want to play the other character, the new solo laners who are not range characters. Maybe, you know. Um, no, they're all unless, range. Unless coots they're all problem. gonna be. What was that? No, they're all gonna be range coots. You don't. You didn't get the memo. Oh, that's true. My bad. We don't. We don't make <laughs> melee heroes anymore. No, no more. Sorry, sorry for all you serious. Feng, Ma Feng Mao's gonna spear chuck from now on, bro. Uh, he's gonna he's gonna yeet it at you instead of swing it at you. No, uh, I actually I actually had an item a thought process. Okay, we're going on forever, so I'm sorry for ranting. Um, but I was thinking the other day, and this is again inspired by plated steel caps from League. Um, what if we take Titan Armor's health regen, right? Take that passive away give it a small a small stat of health regen but make it block basic damage like play the steel caps do and so then a gray stone passive more no, no so like, a, like like 12 percent or something yeah. like that like a small plated, plated steel caps don't give you don't give you uh attack defense it doesn't doesn't give you any basic armor it just blocks damage on a basic attack so you just don't get hit by 10 of the damage so like you can't shred through the armor but you just block 10 damage from the autos Right. Okay. So, like, let's say if that's the case, all of a sudden now ranged heroes, you're they're doing less for trying to poke you. Right. right so, and you also have health regen on this i on what I what I want the item to be. So now all of a sudden ranged are less effective. Yeah. So like plated steel caps, hmm. like armor said, they don't give you armor. They just block. I think it's twelve percent. So it just Maybe. discourages getting poked by a basic. It's like the anti anti like uh, ADC uh, 
boots, right? So you'd be like, ADC is popping off. And that's the thing. It's, 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 but then you would have a Morgash or a Gideon over there destroying well, it. Well, just no, because you just buy Exosuit against Morgash and she doesn't exist in lane and you hold W yeah. on her. Gideon yeah, like, needs to get nerfed, but we've already talked about that. Yeah, Quang, Quang, you pick Quang into like any of the casters, you're going to be all right. Like Quang just seems to just like hard shit on all the casters, but. Because he I is a caster. Kuch, I, I, yeah, I agree with Cooch. I think there needs to be more brawler items because we got what, photosynthesis that's a tank item. We got RGS that's a tank item. Bale is a tank item, as much as people don't want to say it is. Unyielding Mantle is a tank item. The only the green boots are a tank item. The only, the only two brawler, quote unquote, brawler items we have is Goblin Glue and Fist of the Titan. That's it. Um, so having more Maybe. more items to give like HP and damage, like I would love to have a um, like, like a more gauge. more cheapest. Right, like a Sterix gauge, you know, maybe give you some HP and some damage for brawlers, and then gives you the the shield when you get below thirty percent, like the amulet does. Um, have that for a, for a Bruiser, that would be cool. Um, hell, oh, even like something like the uh, Divine Sunderer, you know what I mean? Like that new item in League, like you don't like that. That busted ass item, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't even have to. You wouldn't even have to put like a slow on it. Just give them like yeah. a yeah, just like give them like a and... short short dash and make them have a little bit more resistances for a short duration or something like that when they dash and yeah, yeah I don't know. The range with that range matchup too. Yeah, I'll be real. Yeah, I, mean, I just want like more this. items in general. I would, oh, yeah, I yeah. want more build varieties. I think favor change was a big. In too. Yeah, I, I was about to say. I'm glad that favor change offers you the opportunity from a revealed variety without being penalized for it right right but yeah because you weren't able to more do more items you in say, general you, you start with like you starting start with phantom blade, blade. No. before it's starting yeah, phantom blade was a throw that. yeah you're throwing yeah yeah you just you just yeah. lose i mean i also like going aggressor in uh certain matchups and duo lane. i was gonna say i went grux build him full green full tank with aggressor and put all of my favor into purple so i was building pen passively mm. while i was a tank bro by the end of the game i couldn't be touched and i was smacking with the grux yeah. i love that i can do shit like that now i mean i think that's one of the best changes they made before anybody watching this screams about it being unbalanced if he if you let them get 25 favor they're gonna win the game kill them beforehand <laughs> True to counter argue, I lost my laning phase by doing that. I one hundred. Yeah, I went up again. Yeah, I went up against another dude. I went up against <laughs> another Grux, and he shit on me for the first ten minutes. Loki, I was just like, you know what? I just don't need to die more than the three times I've already died. I'm in three. Let me chill the fuck out. <laughs> but then legit, just slowly played it off. Slowly became tankier, and by the time that the game, I was at there in him, I already had like twenty something favor because I actually rotated to help out my team and whatnot and literally late game clapped early game sucked by all yeah. means but i like the fact that i am able to do shit like that now you know right 100 the, the favor changes i think is great now i just yes, want to cap on yep. how much favor we can have in each color to more provoke different colors of favor too right i think uh, i don't know arma if you agree but a sheen item i think would be also like incredibly nice and for like a lot of you know mages what? and yeah maybe bruiser what's a sheen well. item so sheen is like uh after you use an ability like your next basic attack becomes empowered essentially yeah, um, so it'll do a little bit more damage as uh, well depends i guess but usually it's a little bit more damage yeah so it's like it would be like an item that would be really nice on like casters that have really spammable low cooldown like low damage abilities um or yeah, like, like more gashes mark yeah. Yeah, well, some yeah, something like that. Yeah, Sheen could be good for them. But then also like bruisers or even tanks that have like really spammable low cooldown abilities. Like uh, for example, in League Nasus, his Q is like uh, once it's max, it's like a two second cooldown. It's basically like a really Severog strong attack. Yeah, so like Severog could really make use of a Sheen item in this game where he's gonna siphon somebody. And it's like a two second cooldown, and he's gonna hit him with the hammer on his auto, and that next auto is gonna do a ton of basic Increased damage. damage. It, it, yeah, and you just weave them, you know, you can siphon auto and then like root them auto, you know, right. and ult you're, them are auto. You ready for this? Are you ready for this, Rock? What's that? 
I want sheen. I want a sheen like item. Not exactly sheen, but I want a sheen adjacent item in the game when crunch comes out. Yeah, crunch would also make really good use. <laughs> I of would. It's gonna be great. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be broken. Yeah. <laughs> fucking Mike Tyson over there get you don't need to give Mike Tyson a buff okay <laughs> nobody looks at Mike Tyson and says you know what would be good give him a brass knuckle that's what he needs <laughs> like, no bro no so but yeah, uh, Lindu, uh, I was thinking you uh, you said you start with P-Blade and then you go D-Blade after boots right you can also get Infernal Gunblade and you can be like Ryan Reynolds on Blade Trinity <laughs> I can't with you bro be quiet. <laughs> I can't All with blades. you, bro. <laughs> Blade it up. Out of his mind. Throw the blade in there, too. Oh, Discord. Dude, just blade. And dude, just oh. touch your computer. Do something. Even though this thing's... Hey, tell, tell me I'm wrong, but... I see the Bloodlust Saber, and that thing looks like hedge trimmers to me. It looks yeah, like to me an exaggerated version of like one of those. Yeah, like, I can see that too. Like a little Mass little Effect sword. knife. If anyone's yeah. played Mass Effect, bro, that Bloodless Saber is an yeah. open butterfly knife. Yeah, yeah. There's, change there's my mind. There's, there's, I, there's so I, much I room for more items. Yeah. It's kind of like nuts. Discord is so great. Yeah. Yeah. Discord's tripping. I, Go ahead, I continue, guys. I'm just quiet eating. Uh, no, you good. I'm a. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to cut out here soon. But uh, what I'm gonna say is that i think in my opinion these last like three or four patches i've been really happy with the game's been kind of being pushed in a good direction i feel like the they've kind of got like the foundation now so they can kind of really direct the game that they want to go to um i know for a lot of people the first year's kind of been rough you know but like anybody that's watching this that doesn't play fault or maybe played fault in the beginning and they were like holy shit this is dog water and they stopped playing and they haven't touched it since i think kind of now it's kind of worth revisiting you know what i mean i think that the game is is definitely come a long way i think it's been a you know maybe what do you say to content just... creators that consider this the worst upgrade the worst patch in fall history and like with comments following it like jun because... jungles run the game now etc and stuff like that what do you say to that uh, well, I do think the jungle is maybe a little bit strong right now. Like it, you probably clearing the the red side and maybe being a little bit too healthy out of clearing it. Um, but I mean, they did stuff like up the minion damage to equate for like the HP that you get back when you finish doing a camp or whatever. Um, but maybe maybe it's a little bit too healthy. I think that those things can be adjusted. Obviously, this is the first patch that they've done this change to the jungle so you know those values can get adjusted and that should be like a an easy fix but um i think overall when it comes to like the prime the lesser helix or whatever like i think people are crazy thinking to me when i see lesser helix it is like a less effective rift, rift herald you know because you get rift herald in league yeah it's essentially what thing, it is yeah, you drop that thing in the the turret radius. You don't need your whole team there, there right? Like, and and Rift Herald in League, you've got you've got plates. So you know the first I, I can't remember like what like first fifteen yeah, minutes like of the game, fourteen first, to fifteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like the turrets, their health is like segmented, and if you get one of those segments down on that turret, you get like one hundred sixty gold. You get like half a kill's worth of yeah. gold. So uh, you know. Rift Herald is like an instant, like three plates, you know, or two. two. Yeah, yeah, it two. automatically takes two. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's one kill yeah. just for popping Yeah, so I mean, like, that's the equivalent of taking a, a turret and fault, like, gold wise. So, like, but uh, Rift Herald is, it, it's, it's not really any skill required to generally when you drop a rift herald in a lane you're gonna take that tower and like most most cases you, you're only dropping rift herald after you've like killed that laner and you're sieging the turret you know so it's like okay well we're gonna get like all these plates on this turret and we're gonna take the turret so it's like a ton of gold so to me when i see lesser helix i just think it's a less effective not that damage isn't focused 
only, it's only focused if your entire team is there sieging a, a turret. And when is that? It's not going to happen early game, generally, right? So that right. that damage is spread across the T1s, you know, generally, or the T2s, uh, or maybe you take one turret. But, like, it, I don't think it's that big of a deal. And to me, I like the fact, like I said, we said earlier, it, it, it's in the game. It's an objective on the other side of the map. It makes the, the gold value on the map, like, spread more evenly across yep. the map it makes you know uh <clears throat> more there's more reason for a jungler to be in off lane there's more reason for you know people were complaining before like oh like off lane just feels like a, an island it always kind of will feel like an island but at least That's in this way sense of yeah, role yeah yeah right. and at least in this way there's more reason for your jungler to come over to off lane because i mean i think it's super helpful if you have an off laner that's that's popping off it's pretty helpful if you can take lesser helix and crack that tower and now they're involved in all the fights and their other offlaner isn't yeah. because he's shoved up to his t2 like it pretty much gives you an helpful. extra jungler it gives you right. be pretty much two junglers if you can if you're a solo laner can rotate like that right exactly and then you'll be able to contest raptors a lot more you know I, it's just like because that's the further you know if you if you crack that tower early that's the furthest away from all the other you know map so like exactly. yeah, yeah obviously if you crack mid lane open it opens the map up more and you can kind of invade the jungle and take more off of that but you still you when you crack the offline tower you're, you're getting somebody in the fight and that other person for the most part is literally just not going to be able to show up and if they do they're just losing so much out of their lane you know not xp and gold so i mean i i just think yeah. people I, I don't think that people have had enough time to play this map. I me. don't think yeah. Or, or, yeah, this patch. I don't think that people have had enough time to think about the decisions that they're making in the game. Like we talked about earlier, if you know that they're going to take Raptor, why are you contesting? Don't, don't fight it. Yeah. <laughs> why? There's another objective to take, and you can take it pretty much in the same amount of time. I soloed that thing with Grux at like 12 minutes i, I played grux Easy. and i just popped my r and just i i was i was kind of fed i was like four and oh but like i i i soloed it i think i was like maybe yeah it really doesn't dish out nine. too much damage it's just tanky oh. from what yeah. i've seen yeah, so, yeah you can, and annoying because it still easily... has a prime knockback bro annoying yeah, as shit yeah. <laughs> you can still take that thing with like grux chimera um i'm trying to think who the else. bear could take it bear has yeah, passive life yeah yeah, Boris, Boris, Grux, and Chimera, I think, can, are the ones that can take that by themselves. Yeah, I think um, Grux is like the best jungler right now. Yeah, so if you, I mean, if you, if you prioritize that, just let them take take raps. Like, why are you contesting? You know, it, I see so many people do that now, and I see so many junglers that know that they're taking raps and they don't even try to go for lesser helix. And it's like, okay, like, well, why not? Like, what you know. If they're right. if they're going for this big objective, yeah, you should the, for? right. You should in the very least you should trade. You know you should trade yep. these objectives if you can. So I just don't think that people have had enough time to acclimate to the to the patch. So and and oh yeah, yeah. you know wrap yeah like two what like uh, a few days like, yeah. So yeah, hopefully people will. We'll start doing those things because i i guarantee you if they do if you have a jungler that's competent and it's like okay they're they're doing this i can't contest it or vice versa they're doing lesser helix i can't contest it because my offlaner died let's go get wraps you know i guarantee you if more people do those simple things that they'll find that these matches are a lot closer of course if you let them yeah take wraps and lesser helix at the same time you're gonna feel it it's gonna hurt yeah. you know you're gonna wake yeah. up loki yeah if you let them do that that's five favor um pretty much for the whole team yeah <laughs> and five favor yeah, in no. two minutes yikes that's bro that's it and all the <laughs> xp and all the gold they got i'm gonna be real with you and lesser and lesser helix buff like i'm pretty I, sure the game's over at that point I don't mean to be one of those, but I can smell the F1 coming. Loki. No. And that's happening. <laughs> right? yeah. Loki. 
yeah. But yeah, guys, um, yeah, we, we've been at this already for we've about a little forever. over two hours. Yeah. So thank you guys for coming, specifically Sock, because this is a fucking miracle, to be real with you. I'm sorry. Dude, I, right? I will be, <laughs> I will be July, July 1st is the day. New schedule? New schedule, yeah. So nice. I, will be, oh. I will be going on on day shift July first. Nice, so. dude. Oh, yeah, yeah, I can actually get games with you for yeah. one, one of us. One of us. Let's go. <laughs> I'll be a person of the day now instead of this weird <laughs> half this human. Night half do good yeah. luck with do good yeah. luck with that. Nightwalker. Yeah, that sort that, of switch, bro. Reference again? <laughs> yeah, it was. Unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> Oh, Wesley Snipes is cringing somewhere right now. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'll have to, I'll have to make an adjustment. I'll have to have like some sunscreen or whatever when I come to work. Because the other day, I was like, I just, I keep the same schedule when I'm off work. That way, I don't have to like keep switching, yeah. you know, and screwing right. up my sleep. So like, I, I mowed the lawn the other day, and I was, you know, it's starting to get really hot out in summertime and all that stuff. I'm starting to get warm. I was out there for like 30 minutes. And I was wearing a tank top. I came in. I was like, damn, my shoulders so itchy. I looked at them. They were like, they were like this color. Peeling you know, my yeah. I was like, oh my god, I was out there for 30 <laughs> minutes. Like I'm, I, you know, and, oh, this rough. is what the I, sun feels like. Yikes. Yeah. <laughs> So burst out in the flames, dude. Every time I walk out in the sun, I'll have to, I'll have to get some sunscreen for a while. Bad bro. I'll make sure that everybody's links, including yours, is down there for the first time. Uh, I appreciate it. <laughs> but not for the last time. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, let, let's time. hope. Let's hope. We'll see. But no, I mean, I. It was fun. Bet. I was just gonna say, like in general, to wrap it up, I definitely think that this update, along with the past ones, are. Throw, uh, putting the game in a better direction above all yep. like my general reference to all these updates have been these aren't the updates but they're they're steps no. in the right direction right yeah. yeah like i i'm yeah i'm beyond like ecstatic that like for example the past like i think two or three updates there's been a lot of jungle changes right and you can tell like a lot of focus yeah. is on like adding new things and making the jungle experience better and i can't wait for that attention to detail to expand to the other lanes like so outer lane get, like a really lane, full fledged so. like right. it's gonna feel really good once we all get that you know right. what i mean so i'm just i'm really excited yeah i mean i just kind of look at it as like the devs like have their like their little clay mold and they're just like they're forming the game to how they want it and they're just making those slight adjustments and no, what we're seeing in slow motion kind of is because it's these small patches is like the changes that they're making and when you're looking at that patch just as it is is like it doesn't make sense but if you look at a big picture you look at all the patches put together and you kind of see what they're doing like okay i can if you're looking just as one patch like okay this is like, what's up with this patch? this makes no sense right but you look at all these patches since 13 it's like all right everything's kind of tying together it's all working towards one goal and once we finally get there but you know wait till we get patch 14 you're, you'll understand a lot more bro my general shot at sms is literally going to be hire more fucking people so you guys can be more effective because i don't i don't think it's a question of if you can do it it's more of a question of when and more right. people in a normal perfect world means faster results just make sure of yeah, course it's sure. the right people you hire don't go hire somebody that's going to set you back yeah. and shit. you know that's a different story um right I will say one thing to give a little shout out to Jamson. I think he's been doing a lot of really, really good work here lately. Him and uh, Espada, both of them. Obviously, yeah, Jester and Fresher behind changes. the scenes. Yeah, so Jester and Fresher <laughs> behind the scenes at Selfin. Yeah, they, they, they all, you know, are doing their stuff. But I think Jamson and Espada have definitely stepped up here as of late and been a lot. You guys will see. Those yeah, map changes were big, to, significant. Spoilers or not, but uh, I think you'll definitely see some some visual uh, improvements throughout. James has been doing a lot of stuff on that, so there'll be a lot of uh, better yeah, visual was... feedback, a lot of more visual effects on a lot of stuff that they, you know, haven't used yet um, that they had access to, and are now like kind of because they mentioned out how that the pipeline was getting act, easier to right. be able to add stuff, effects, yep. visuals. Yeah, I mean, hey, I mean, if anybody who plays Chimera noticed after the hot, the hot fix yesterday, you guys got new animations. Bro, got pop, new popping, pressing E as Chimera, trip me the fuck out. Gotta say, <laughs> yeah. I'll be real Yo, with you. Right, and then I saw like glowing Everyone. around. I was like, 
If you don't, okay, that feels I'm weird. sorry. If you don't max E on Chimera first, you're inting. End of story. <laughs> True. I don't know. Talk about, it's talk not about a joke. it down below in the comments, bro. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I guess. Ta I don't know. I don't talk know about, about, about it down below in the comments. You, you, the you, get, you get max stacks off of max E. Just press it, and then your max stacks when you fight, when you engage in the fight. YOLO. Don't somebody, use it to sacrifice your stacks. Just get to start your stacks. Somebody sent me a clip of an energy build Chimera maxing out that right click. That's all I'm saying. Do it. You, you send me the clip. <laughs> send me the clip. <laughs> if it's anyway. like building a blue Murdoch. Oh. Oh, oh, bro, don't oh, even get me started the, the there. I shots, did that, bro. bro. <laughs> I don't even know if Sock knows, but I did that shit because the, nope. the abilities or the ultimate never said or I forgot what it was. There was some yeah. technical yeah, wording was, in there that never said yeah. an energy damage didn't work. So I was like, in my mind, yeah, it, it does. Like, it does energy damage, but it scales with AD, so it yeah, fucked him up. But it didn't yeah. say that for like the first couple months. <laughs> yeah, I straight got fucked up. If you want, some, I don't know if it's been fixed or not, but like, uh, if you want a meme, a meme build window that's actually kind of funny, we did this uh -oh. in. Uh, I actually think we did this in Kucha's Customs. Yeah, we did. I I went uh, four, no five Phantom Blades on um, yep. Yep, Murdoch. Yeah, and you got like the 50 flat pin or whatever it was off of that, and you got a ton of cooldown, right? So like, we reached max cooldown, and the the tooltip. I don't know if it's been fixed on Murdoch, but the tooltip says you only have three traps out. That's not the case. You could have. I had eight down at one yep. point, so I put all what eight traps on the spot. <laughs> in the same exact spot. Yeah, and I watched one of the mages walk into that, and he hit that shit. It was like, <gasps> and he's like, Ooh. Yeah. you know, he just saw him, did like, I did like seventy five. I can imagine that'll HP. get fixed. Yeah, I can't yeah, imagine like, that'll get fixed, bro. Well, it's, it's funny. It's like a, oh, a mod man. from the flame moment because oh. those visual effects of the traps, they all like stack on each other. So it's like some super bright glowing trap all in one spot. <laughs> He's like, what is this? And he walked into his legs, got blown off. He was like, oh my God, what, what did I just get hit with? It was like 75% of his bro. HP. That's Walk funny as shit. Light. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. So, That's funny. That's oh funny. I'm all right, homies. Yeah, Tuesdays, <laughs> much me. love to everybody. Hey, everybody's welcome. As, yeah. everybody's for welcome. sure. But as far as this video, guys, I'm just gonna cut it to an abrupt halt. See you. Peace. <laughs> <All right. laughs>